Welcome to CTV's broadcast of East China High School Sports, presented to the community by Magda. Let's join our announcers now for all the action of East China High School Sports. Welcome into another edition of High School Football here on CTV. Tom Brenner, Brad Robbins caught the end of a combination national anthem, I believe that was, right? St. Clair Marine City Bands, I believe, maybe got together there. Both represented in the uh, beginning of the rivalry, kind of get together and share this common space, painting each end zone, and then obviously the Mariner sideline lit up, and it's kind of nice to see a packed house here on a fall evening, Friday Night Lights. If you couldn't tell, the house is packed because it's Marine City. They're the away team, and St. Clair, they're technically the home team here in a battle of the two East China high schools. Both teams 1-1 one and one coming into the contest. Both of them opened up the season with losses, bounced back last week, looking to take care of the battle for the bell. Should be a good one here. Saints, of course, coached by James Bishop, assisted by Brian Tatman, TJ Schindler, Parker Griefor, Brady Gleason, Dennis Delore. And Darren Letson is the head coach of the Marine City Mariners. Defensive coordinator is Dave Front. Offensive line is Joe Forgetto. Defensive ends and linebackers, Andy Scheel. Defensive line, Tony Scarcelli. You may have heard of him before. Defensive assistant, Loudon Newberry. Mike Westrick, assistant on offense. Dave Volkman, statistician. Goes on and on and on for both sides. The entire sides. community comes out for Mariner football. We yep. know that. And obviously some experienced coaching staffs really on on both sides, good continuity throughout the program. James Bishop been with the Saints for quite a while now as well in his tenure. And then looking down at the field, Brian tapman has been around, I think, since I played high school football. So uh, a good knowledge of what goes into this particular rivalry in both teams at 1-1. One and one. Uh, got right last week. Marine City in a really big way against Clawson, putting up 62 points. Be interesting to see. You know, I was on the broadcast with uh, Coach Bill Nesbitt in the opener at home. Saints kind of went back to that struggling offense, and tonight I think um, that's going to be a, a huge deal. The Saints obviously kicking off here uh, leads you to believe they're going to get the ball in the second half. But, uh, you know, that offense, the defense has been solid, you know, for I'll say all of last season in the opener. Uh, they got to rely on that today, but find some explosive plays on the offensive end. Saints wearing all blue, Mariners wearing all white. Got the white out going here. Opening kickoff, we are underway at East China Stadium. There's that patented starburst. Brought down at the 20-yard line there. Nice-looking tackle there by number 44 for the Saints. That's Ryan Pettinger opening things up big for the Saints. There you see Connor Gunn and, and Coach Bishop. They elect to kick to the starburst, which you don't see very often. Um, St. Clair obviously pretty familiar with what Marine City is going to do in that regard. And first guy kept it. That was Grant Westrick. And, yeah, Pettinger, great job just hunting it down. Uh, not deceived at all. Makes a tackle and gets a uh, pretty good field position, I guess, defensively for the Saints. Joking around when we were looking at the jerseys earlier. Looked like a color rush game Thursday night football for the NFL. Mariners can open up with a run here to start things off. That's a carry by number 18, Cameron Malus Maluski, senior for Marine City. Picks up about six yards on the play. Should perhaps let the people know at home. Might have some difficulty with numbers today, even though the numbers now are a little easier to read than they have been in years past. Missing a monitor uh, up here for the broadcast. Another carry there. Looks like Paul Muscat on the carry. I think he was brought down there by number 87, Cooper Pennywell for the Saints. Pennywell up front. Had, you know, he's been playing well for a while, but he's kind of the stalwart. He'll move him around a little bit. He'll pressure the passer. Obviously there you see Stout in the run game as well. He's going to play some offense and be a target at tight end at times. Big bodied guy, leader for the team. He's going to have to come up big in a rivalry. Mariners quick to get on the football here. Man in motion comes back around to your bottom of your screen, rolling. Man wide open and it's dropped. Right there, really nice play call. They had Colin Gabler out on the perimeter. He got behind the Saints secondary. Saints find some good fortune there as he's not able to hold on. Looked like that could have been at worst case been a very nice gain for Marine City. 
And I think the best case might have been a house call. Yeah, and I, as you see, I think the the throw was just not quite perfect. I think yep. he had to turn his body a little bit. Right. Gabler looks like a pretty big guy. And oh, uh, hunts, and he's going to take his time and scan to make sure nobody was wide open. Then he boots it down, and it takes a very ooh, friendly wow. Marine City roll. Wow. That thing landed just inside the 30, and that is all the way down to the five-yard line. I know it's on special teams there, Tom, but that's an explosive play. Yeah. You know, that was deception on the rollout, which, you know, St. Clair will do that at times, see that rugby, rugby style with an option. And then to get the return man to suck up into that a little bit and just booted it over his head with a good roll. Long way to go here for the Saints. Talk about flipping the field position there. Marine City did a nice job after going three and out there on their opening drive. So first down for the Saints wearing those all blues. Those jerseys came in today. Yeah, they look nice, look sharp. And as we said, a little bit easier to identify the numbers coming off. Sophomore Ben Farkas is under center for St. Clair. You can see him back there in the shotgun looking to his left. Looks to air it out right away, looking to his left, and it's almost picked off and then almost caught as well. He was looking for Braden Schulk. Passes incomplete. Looked like Grant Westrick on the coverage there. Ran with him the whole way. That looked like one of those plays that had been scripted all week, and for a second there, I thought it I thought it went well for the Saints. Westrick, good recovery. And then Schalk, as you mentioned, <laughs> almost pulled that out of his hand and made a spectacular play. Goes for not. So second down and 10 now for St. Clair. Some pretty good athletes for both sides, offensively and defensively. We're going to see a lot of guys playing both ways. About 30 boys on St. Clair's varsity team this year. Farkas once again looking to pass. This time he's rolling to his right. Looks out for Pennywell. Oh, looks like he was looking a little deeper than that. Looks like the pass was intended that time for Liam Nesbitt, incomplete as well. Gabler gave chase right off the edge there. They kind of left him unblocked and relied on the the rollout, the waggle play there by Farkas. A lot of times, you know, in, in the opener, they'd have Farkas kind of reverse and roll out to his, I guess, weaker side. And that's a tough throw to flip the hips and make. This time they roll him the other way, allows him to get a little bit behind it. But it, we had two receivers in the area and kind of landed in between both of them. This time Farkas under center. He's got Nesbitt and Shulk wide takes his time takes the snap hands it off this time on third down and 10 look like he almost lost the football but he's brought down looks like short of the first down that's Ellis on the carry there you're going to see his name called quite a bit and a good little pick up there for the Saints but only works as well to get them just out of the shadow yeah. of their end zone to punt it so fourth down and three Saints going to send out the punt team I assume Muscat and Atkinson back to receive both dangerous, speedy guys. Atkinson in particular, he can move. So coverage team going to have to do a good job. Looks like Pennywell's a punter. Yeah. Doing it all tight end, defensive end, and punter. End over end. It's a little bit of a short one. Mariners hand it off after that. Look out, this could be a house call. It is. It is a Mariner touchdown. The original ball returner handed that thing off. Almost immediately, and it's a Marine City touchdown early. The reverse, they punted it right to him. There's not a much hang time allowing coverage to get down. And as I mentioned, Atkinson makes the house call with all that speed, turned around, and the deception was enough to get everybody to go one way. Nobody was sure until it was too late. Not sure who the original returner was there, but that is a touchdown for number 14, senior Parker Atkinson. Muscat was the guy who caught the punt. 6-0 Marine City, nine and a half minutes to go here in the first. Extra point on its way is up and good. Make it 7-0 Marine City here in the first quarter. And those are the plays, you know, Saints defense comes out in that first drive as um, Marine City received the opener, did a great job and got a three and out. But that right there, um, you know, is partially a result of St. Clair not getting out of their own end zone, but also that punt going back to Marine City's first drive. They pinned St. Clair down at the five. And, uh, well, what a, and what a difference. A huge punts. difference coming out of that <laughs> punt, right? <laughs> the Marine City punt rolled forever. Very nicely done. And the line and Marine drive. Marine City brought that one back to the house. Yeah, line drive from Pennywell just played right into the cards of the Mariners there trying to get some deception. And that line drive kick was no problem for Muscat and it allowed him plenty of time to set up the reverse. And then Atkinson took it from there. 
So Marine City going to line up to kick this one away to the Saints. See if we can get a look who's going to return this one for St. Clair. So Ellis and Luther are going to be back. Luther was pretty prominently featured as a ball carrier. You're going to see him get some looks uh, offensively. Gabriel will run the ball a little bit, and obviously Ellis in the backfield as well. Kick is away. It's a pretty good one. And back there, he gets his hands on it, rolls into the end zone. I think he's going to have to bring this one out. I don't believe you no. have to. And I was saying, I don't think that – never. I don't really think Jacob had. Luther was quite no. sure what he had no. to do. He was hoping he'd hear a whistle. Yeah. And he got one. As a matter of fact, the referee's probably saved his life. <laughs> that was a uh, that was going to be a difficult spot for him to be in. Yeah. So they're going to mark the ball as a touchback. Mark that one down as a break for the Saints after mishandling that kick. What another? What a kick! That great kick. Special teams is going to play an important role in every football game, and you're seeing it on full display here early. So Farkas and the Saints looking to answer here down seven. Nine and a half to go here in the first quarter at East China Stadium. Man in motion. Looks like he hands it to the first man through. Breaks a tackle and comes down. That looks like Ellis on the carry once again. Looks like he picks up about four or five yards on the play. Yeah, they're going to lean on him in the run game. He's an explosive player. Tough kid. You'll see him line up a little bit at quarterback too, almost in a, you know, just getting an extra runner on there. And I think one of the keys to tonight uh, – Ben Farkas is going to have to be part of the running attack. I think it have been a little guarded to get him out on the edge and let him make plays. He's going to have to come into his own a little bit that way. Saints are going to want to extend drives. So make it second and six. It was about a four-yard gain there on first down for Peyton Ellis. Man in motion this time is Ellis once again. Farkas rolling to his right. Overthrow, and it's intercepted. Atkinson. Interception there, Atkinson, the man who just scored a touchdown on a punt return, picks it off for Marine City, and the Mariners are going to have this football on offense in St. Clair territory. Kind of looked like he was looking for Ellis there and just overthrew him. Atkinson went up top, made a really nice play, putting in his bid for player of the game early. So the Mariners have it on the Saints 34-yard line. Send out that offense, wearing the all-whites up 7. 8.45 is what's left on the clock here in the first. Two men in the backfield. It looks like a play-action fake here. Rolling to his right, has a man open, gets to the 30, 25. Oh, lost the football. It's on the deck, and the Saints have the ball. Coming up with the fumble recovery there. Looks like number one, Cam Kaminsky. Mariners had something going there, and as he made the cut, lost the football. Cam Kaminsky with the fumble recovery, but we have an injured Mariner on yep. the field, and they're getting the waved over, so it doesn't look great. I'm not sure who it is on the ground. Holding his knee. If it was the ball like. carrier, or hard to see from where we're at. Obviously, kind of wait for them to tend to the injured player. Yep. And just a reminder, we don't, we cannot see any replays or anything up here in the booth, so. Keep do our best to kind of let you know what happened. Injured yeah, player is Grant yeah, Westrick, it looks like. Number one, Grant Westrick, senior for Moraine City. He's holding his face mask. Looks like he's in quite a bit of pain. Well, just judging by the reaction yeah. of the Saints' sideline, um, they made it seem as if there was yes. something visibly yes. possibly wrong yes. with him outside of it. So yeah. never like to see that. No. Obviously, he's getting looked at by people who can see it much better than we can. But yep. hoping there's only positive outcomes for the young man. He's a senior and obviously a featured person on their team. And never like to see a player go down. This is week three. He's maybe going to get up with the assistance of the Mariner athletic training staff. I'm guessing that's trainer Corey May out there on the field helping Westrick up. Jaeger Zemer, one of the Saints coaches, is also a trainer helping out. Going to help make the long journey all the way back to the Mariner sideline. Nothing but the best here for Grant Westrick. Yeah, not able to put much weight on that as he heads off. Both sidelines pretty packed here. 
getting the additional assists from Parker Atkinson, even carrying guys yeah. off the field today. So doing it all, he's going to stay in the game. And the, Sa the Saints, you know, not that you want to get too crazy and celebrate anything right now, but a big play by right. the Saints defense that was kind of dimmed by that injury there. But a big play and a big fumble recovery by Cam Kaminsky has the Saints back in business uh, after a big momentum swing there on the interception earlier. Yep. So Farkas in the gun, man in motion. This time is Luke Gabriel. Hands it off to the first man through. Nice gain here for the Saints on first down as they get their drive started, looking to respond down 7 0. Jacob Luther, pretty good carry there. Saints offensive line doing a decent job here. They've gotten the call a couple times here. Obviously, not in that first drive as much, but in the second one looked okay and we're moving the ball in there. A nice chunk play. Gain of about four yards there for Luther. Saints come back. Nesbitt and Shulk wide once again. Man in the slot looks like it's Gabriel once again. Gabriel goes in motion. Looks like they're going to hand this one off to Ellis right side. Another he gets through, hole. breaks one through. He makes another man miss. He's out to the 45, and he's finally brought down. It's a St. Clair first down. Evan Jones helping on the tackle there. It looked like he was hunting the football a little bit. Ellis did a good job of holding on to it. And another big hole that right side of the Saints offensive line opens it up in a big chunk play for the offense. Good for the Saints offense to see something positive going there. They get right back up on the line. Clock is running, heading towards seven and a half to go here in the first. Farkas in the gun, Ellis back there with him. Three men wide. Farkas is going to keep it rolling to his left. Tough play, but he's got a man. It's Pennywell. Pennywell, the sideline, reaches out to about the Mariner 46. You can see this. Saints coaching staff jumping with some urgency there because Pennywell was open very early in that route, and I think they were nervous Farkas wasn't going to see him. He did see him, and pretty nice hands there by Pennywell. Good stretch. They didn't give him as much as it looked like from here, but a good chunk play on first down. They're going to spot this one on the Mariner 47. Guessing when Cooper reached there, his he foot was, was already out of yeah. bounds or something like to that effect. Man in motion, Gabriel once again. This time they're going to hand it off. Ellis, left side, cuts back, picks up maybe a yard. Should bring up down about third down and two. We're going to be a full two, though, for the Saints. Good adjustment there on the fly by Ellis because the original hole that he was supposed to go through, there was nothing there. He was in line for a, a loss, and I think that, that little cutback, he at least made something back to the line of scrimmage. He showed nice patience on that long gainer a second ago. Showed nice patience once again on that play. It is third down and two on the Mariner 46. Two men in the backfield here. Farkas is right under center. Looks to his left, hands it to the first man through. This is gonna be a close one here, depends on the spot. Looks like the near side official has it as a first down. Far side, not likely a first down, but it sure does appear this will be a St. Clair first down. Yes, they and did. It is. They gave it to him and they're moving him up. Yeah, it was as close as it gets. No measurement. They moved them, and uh, a nice nice start to this drive here for the Saints. Making it happen mostly on the ground on this drive. Six minutes to go in the first on CTV. Farkas in the gun. One man in the backfield. This time Ellis is the man in motion. He hands it off to Luther. He's tripped up in the backfield. Nice play there. Looked like number 55 for Marine City. That's Jeremy Westrick. Westrick did a good job, and Saints, you mentioned, doing a lot of their work on the ground. You'll see those defensive backs start to shoot little gaps, try to get some ankles. Westrick does that there to disrupt, so Saints going to have to work a little balance. I do like that they're getting that run game going. I don't think they can win without it, um, but they're going to have to keep the Mariners honest, especially those defensive tackles that have historically loved to kind of submarine in and make problems in the backfield. Loss of one on that play brings up second down and 11 now. Farkas back in the shotgun. Sends a man in motion as Ellis hands it off to the Luther once again, and he's brought down in the backfield again. It looks like it was Westrick. Try to go the other way. Westrick's figured something out. I don't know who's one-on-one -on -one with him in the front. Westrick's, Westrick's causing problems up front on this drive for the Saints. So third. Third down and 13 now on the Marine City 47. Clock ticking, and we're under five minutes to go here in the first quarter. Saints have had a good drive going here. 
Yeah, you almost want to, on this play, you don't, you would guess they're going for maybe seven, eight yards here. You don't need to get it all in one no. time here because you're in a, in a position on the field where you don't need to do it. Four down territory. You don't have to pick it all up. That will help. Good discipline there. Mariners going to be kicking themselves a little bit because they don't want to give the Saints anything, but they're going to move it back up at least to the original line of scrimmage. So your theory still holds, but yep. it's nice to get an extra down to do it in. Might uh, make even more sense now. <laughs> no, no question. I think the whole playbook is open here as well. I don't yep. think just because it's going to be third and eight that it requires you to throw to get that first down. I think you're going on fourth anyways, so pick up at least half of it and be happy and then dial up your best four-yard play. It's now third down and eight for St. Clair. They're on the Mariner 42. Fark is back there in the gun once again. Man on his hip this time. Ellis going in motion. Looks like he's going to hand it to Luther. No, he keeps it. He's going to be brought down at about the 41, so maybe picked up a yard on the play. Should bring up about fourth and seven. Bodie Ramsey kind of lassoed Ben Farkas there. Did a good job, so I think he gets by Bodie, and that's a, a good pickup. There they try to feature Farkas a little bit in the run game, and it does look like the special teams unit's going to come out. Coach Bishop putting some faith in that defense playing field position. So fourth and seven. Now the question's going to be, Tom, what direction do they punt in? Although they have a single back this time, looks like just Muscat, no Atkinson. <laughs> Does not mean he does, he's not going to peel back. Yeah. Saints send a few guys in motion to the right, reset their formation. This time it looks like Ellis is punting. Look like first. That's a popular thing now, especially in high school football. It takes a friendly Ooh. ball off of a Mariner hand. Bodies diving. Gosh. I think Marine City jumped on that. It looked like it at first. The officials haven't signaled for sure. Yeah, based off the lack of excitement, I would guess yeah, Marine is. City's <laughs> on there. <laughs> But, yeah, you mentioned, so the Saints going with kind of a, a two different setups special teams-wise with the punter if they are going to do kind of a standard punt, bring out Pennywell, maybe a little bit better yep. leg. Um, but then there you see the Saints go unbalanced, yep. roll out with a kind of an option. Ellis with a nice punt, pins the Mariners deep. So Marine City going to start this drive on their own eight-yard line. This time it's a handoff coming to the bottom of your screen, makes a man miss. Makes another cut, cuts it back, gets all about to the 20-yard line there. Nice-looking carry there for number 18. That's Cameron Maluski. Good carry, pretty deceptive. Did a good job of making the first man miss. Liam Nesbitt did a good job coming up, but one-on-one, -on -one, just didn't win that battle. And a good pickup in the first down gets the Mariners kind of out of the shadow of their own end zone. So a first down for Marine City, first and 10 from the, about their own 21-yard line. He'll look back to pass this time. He's looking to his left, sends it out there. There's two Saints. It's picked off by Peyton Ellis. The second St. Clair forced turnover. They went up top. There were two Saints in the area. Ellis was kind of just playing center field there. Kaminsky was out in coverage as well. And Ellis does, does a great job. Might have been a little contact between yep. Kaminsky, like knee to knee with the receiver. Yep. And you don't see a flag. Because honestly, it kind of was... It was more of Ellis's ball to go and catch than anybody else's. And yep. And Kaminsky did come up limping on the play. Gets himself to the sideline, but he's got a pretty good limp going there. Put another feather in the cap of the Saints defense. Doing yep. a great job. Offense got to answer. Fumble now recovered. would be a good time. Fumble recovered and now an interception. They've got the ball at midfield. They're technically in Mariner territory. Farkas under center. Fakes it, pitches it to Ellis. Ellis going right side, makes a man miss and gets himself to the Marine City 45. Picks up about four on the play. A little different look there, kind of a speed option look. Didn't see that in week one. Obviously going to be some wrinkles too. As the, the season wears on, you're able to do a little more install. Guys get comfortable with the, the basic formations in place. So Peyton Ellis is getting his... Big time workload early and often here for St. Clair. Had the interception, then gets a carry there on first down. Second and six, Farkas this time going to be in the gun. He's got a man to his left. A couple guys split out top of your screen and one at the bottom. Gabriel going to go in motion. Farkas looking to go to his left and pass. Looks over the middle, has a man out there, and it's caught. That is Schalk, and Schalk will score for the Saints. Touchdown, St. Clair. Excellent job, Farkas. That was that reverse rollout, but that time he was able to flip it, stepped up in the pocket, threw a beautiful ball on time and target. You see Schalk with the catch, and Vandeviver out there in coverage wasn't able to stick with him to the house. So 
So the Saints offense, tip of the cap to their defense for forcing another turnover. This time they capitalize on it, 7-6. Marina City still on top, extra point coming up here for St. Clair. Obviously worth mentioning as well, that pocket that was created, huge and uh, with all that time, just as important for that offensive front. Great job by the guys up front. Gay Farkas, plenty of time to make that read and let it fly. Looks like Connor Gunn is going to do the kicking here for St. Clair on the extra point. Snap is away. Kick is up, and it is good. We are tied at 7. 154 to go here in the first, and we are back to a tie ball game. So an explosive play. Parker Atkinson on the punt return and an explosive play to the opposing number 14, Schalk, over the top. So both 14s for each roster into the end zone to have a tie game late in the first quarter. And here the Saints finally getting one across early, which has been a struggle. Um, plays in huge. Now they just got to go out and defend it, keep it tight. Saints sideline showing a little more energy now. Turnover and a touchdown will do that for you. So Gunn going to get the Saints ready to go for kickoff here. Buck 54 to go. Same question exists. How are they going to play special <laughs> teams? You see the starburst awaits them. We saw Parker Atkinson in track. He was a dual sport guy in the spring. Baseball and track, yes. I would take it. No doubt. One, of the, district one champion. of the best sprinters in the state of Michigan. And a district champion baseball yeah. year as well. So yep. Had to play baseball instead of going to the state finals and track. Big, big time decision there, but that's kind of one of the things that happens when you're a dual sport guy. <laughs> good at a lot good, of things, you gotta make problems. a lot of choices. First world problems. <laughs> Kick is away and it's gonna go out of bounds. That's gonna be a penalty on St. Clair. All right, so that bounces at about the 22. Well, I would imagine Marin City wants it a re-kick. Yeah, I, they're gonna want the penalty and they'll want to try that starburst again, yeah. I would think. Looks like that's probably the case. Yep. Obviously, it, if they would have chosen, the ball would have been brought up much further than where it went out of bounds. But nonetheless, they can take the penalty and have Connor Gunn try that again. Gunn does a nice job, but not a guy who's going to boot it through the end zone for a touchback. you got to go and defend his kicks. So here we go, we're getting a redo here of the St. Clair kickoff after they had a outstanding sequence on defense and offense. So here we go, another try. And this time they're gonna squib this one, easily field it. Oh, a toss back here for Marine City. They try to get it to Atkinson and nicely done by the Saints. That ends up being like a loss of 10 to 15 yards after they tossed it back. Yeah, honestly, not a not a bad uh, outcome. If you're St. Clair, oh. you kicked it out of bounds. They took the penalty and, and really, it's, with the Mariners being at the 32-yard line, that's the best thing you could have hoped for. And they kept it away from the explosive starburst. Hindsight's 20-20, but probably would have been better for the up man just to keep that, get a couple yards, and start at about the 44. So Marine City first down from their own 32-yard line. Couple men in the backfield here. Hand off to the second man through. Nice tackle there by number 52 for St. Clair. That's Carter Peterson. Carter Peterson also an important part of that offensive line. But just did a great job in giving Farkas a lot of time to tie this thing up. Mariners hurry back up onto the ball. Saints bring in a little bit of pressure. First man through, a couple Saints there to meet him. It looked like Pennywell cleaned it up. Nicely done there for St. Clair's D-line. Disruptive blitz call, did a good job. Occupied the guys up front. That allowed Pennywell just to play loose. Found the ball carrier. and. Makes it third and long for the Mariners. So the Saints defense showing up. Let's see how the secondary holds up. That was a carry there by Paul Muscat for Marine City. Third down and nine from their own 33. Marine City in the gun. Rolling to his left, looking to pass. Looks like he might keep it. It maybe picks up a couple, cuts back. Met by a host of Saints. Picked up maybe three or four yards. But the Saints going to force a fourth down. Did look like the Mariners might have got away with too many people moving right at the snap. Nonetheless, they only picked up a couple. I think early on like this in defensive battle, I don't know if you want to risk this and go for it on this side of the 50. I think you go for that special teams play again, see if the Mariners can pin the Saints deep. 
That was Lincoln Osterlin, their quarterback there. And this time the Mariners are on. This is Atkinson once again. He has to go all the way to the Saints sideline to get this punt away. Hits it just inside the 30. This one's still going to take a Mariner bounce. Not quite as good as the other one, but still, all you punter fans out there, that's inside the 20. A good punt, not quite as good no. as that last one. but Tough it, to beat that one. It does cause some issues, uh, and I, I'll be honest, I don't quite know the rule um, on how tempting it is for you to be rolling on that punt, and as a defender, what protections that punter has when he rolls out of the pocket like that. I don't know if he goes to then punt that football if you hit him, if it's roughing the kicker or not. I, I would think that the rules would suggest if you roll like that, you are much more at risk. You would think you'd turn into a runner at a certain point. Much like a quarterback kind of does, etc. cetera. Farkas passed it to his right. Looked like maybe a little bit of miscommunication. Was in a hurry. Mariners brought some pressure there. Was looking for Liam Nesbitt. Passing complete. Second down and 10 coming up for Saints. Yeah, pretty quick pressure there. Looks like Owen Jacobs was right in the face of Ben Farkas. That, that was the reason that ball was so far off target. Probably a little bit fortunate that it sailed out of reach so I believe that brings us to the end of the first quarter here on CTV we are tied at 7 we'll be back with second quarter action after these messages here on CTV thought about changing your job finding a place to work that's close to home a place that cares about you and your family well Magda's hiring Hi, my name is Anthony Finley. I'm the finance intern here at Magna Electric Vehicle Structures in St. Clair, Michigan. I've never been so honored to tell people where I currently work. Um, I, love the t I love the team, I love the facility, and I love everything else about this place. And I'm really proud of the investment that I've made on my future. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 300,000 participants here in Michigan who take part in high school sports. All right, welcome back. We got second quarter action here on CTV. Tom Brenner, Brad Robbins. What a pretty nice, entertaining first quarter here at East China Stadium. We're tied at seven. Yeah, both teams made a couple of mistakes, but both teams made some explosive plays. Both defenses kind of showing, showcasing some solid play up front in the run game. And Saints going to try and march a long way down the field after a pretty darn good special teams play, one of a few that we've seen so far. Looked like Bodie Ramsey made a pretty nice play. Set up the ball carrier there for Marine City. So third down and 10 now for the St. Clair offense. Nesbitt, bottom of your screen. Shulk, who just scored a touchdown for the St. Clair Saints, is up top of your screen. Farkas in the gun, has a man to his left. Looking to pass, dropping back. He's under pressure. Couple Mariners on the play here. Pretty nice play. Marine City all over that. Pressure looked like, once again, 55. Jeremy Westrick was one of those guys in there, and he's all fired up still. Pre pressure was in there immediately that time, and no chance for Farkas uh, at all. So fourth down and 22 now for the Saints. Pinned all the way back on their own seven-yard line. It's always tough there if you're, you know, Coach Bishop trying to dial up a play. Do you run the ball and, and not risk retreating from the 20 to punt from? Uh, or do you try to pass and pick it up and, you know, put the pedal down? They opted to be the more aggressive route and paid some consequences there with a good defensive play up front by the so Mariners. So this time Cooper Pennywell back there to punt it again. This one is going to be punted and lands just inside. It landed about the 44 and goes out of bounds. Just barely in Mariner territory. It's going to end up stopping and being marked at about the 47. So not too bad. Pretty good punt from inside the end zone. And Mariner's going to take over on this side of the 50 this time. See if the Saints defense can continue to hold up. They deserve all the praise. And I said it at the, the opener. The um, defense has been solid for two years now. And they in the opening game, they were... 
They were on the field a lot on a really hot night and held up pretty well, although they lost the game. Certainly wasn't because of the effort of the defense, and they're going to lean on them here tonight. So Osterlund and the Mariners come back out on offense, hands it off. He was met quickly and then is finally brought down. Cooper Pennywell is all over the place. Nice tackle on the play there. Pennywell had him, oh, lost Penny, him, and he, regained Pennywell him. Pennywell landed hard on, this, on the ball carrier here. I think it was Muscat who carried that ball. He landed very awkwardly when he was brought down. He immediately signaled for a sub. He's struggling to get back over to the Mariners' sideline. Mariners opt to call a timeout. Yeah, it did look like Pennywell had Pennywell, him wrapped he up. Like, he like looked concerned when he got up off. Yeah. Yeah, he, he went back to check on yeah. him. I think he knew it was a little awkward. Pennywell had had him at first and then reached for that jersey. I think he ended up trying to pull him back and rip the ball out. And in the process of doing so, it wasn't a horse collar tackle, but it kind of finished like one in the intention of, you know, that being a penalty. Um, certainly not one there. This, this was interesting because no one attended to Muscat. But, like, the Saints came over to the sideline, and they're getting water. Well, well the, the officials signaled timeout. And that, that was interesting. And I don't know, did they charge anybody? They charged the Mariners with one, but then they didn't end up taking the entirety of it. No. Pass complete this time. It's like Cooper Letson with the catch. Osterlin completes that one to Letson. 7-7. Seven, seven. We're under 10 minutes to go here in the second quarter now at East China Stadium. Not sure if you can hear our friend in the background there, Brady Beaton, on the call for Get Stuck on Sports. Got to give him a shout-out. Him and I were going over some stats earlier, and we were kind of looking at the overall series. Always fun to look at history. Snap. This time it's handed off. Saints meet him pretty quickly there. Maluski once again on the carry for Marine City. Second down and nine coming up here for the Mariners. We, we looked it up. The, the state keeps records of football pretty good since 1950 46 21 and 4 in favor of the Mariners that's the all-time series no surprises there have been some long runs and some really successful Mariner programs Saints kind of come up and get them once in a while yep. but record sounds sounds about as I remember it I was still under center gonna turn hands it to the first man through and he's met immediately this time pretty nice play there by number 62 for the Saints that's Will Schroeder Schroeder comes up, makes a nice play. Schroeder was not active in game one. They missed his presence up front. And there you see why. Saints defensive front doing a good job. Mariners not really able right now to get anything, you know, in chunks on the ground. They're earning it. So third down and ten, and it's a full ten for the Mariners. A couple men in the backfield, two receivers up top. A little bit of a fake under pressure. Met quickly. First man in there. For the Saints, I'm trying to see if I can get it. Looked a number. like Elijah Naylor, possibly. 34, 54. Still hasn't turned our way. Yep, 54. Caden Lohr. Is that 54 or 64? Yep, I, think it was right. 50, I think it was 54. Yeah, we, yeah no, it's 64. Okay. We got Lohr on the front there in front of okay. us. Okay. Again, no monitors. We're doing it from the top here, folks. And I'm getting old. <laughs> Kaminsky on the return here. That's a one. We can get the one. <laughs> so the Saints defense, once again, pretty nice job. Getting their offense the ball back and a chance to take the lead. I'm not sure. You mentioned we don't have monitors. I'm not sure if our cameras have showed this or not. But there is a mascot now. Yeah, here Brand, at that's, that's new to me. I don't know the name of said mascot. Yeah. I don't know if he is super saint. He reminds me a little bit of Sparty, yep. which is no, a lot troublesome. Of it, a lot of bit of which Sparty. Is troublesome. A lot of it. Uh, so Sparty saint. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but you know, nonetheless. If, we, if cool we were edition. live streaming, yeah. we could do like a live <laughs> poll. What should they name yeah, the mascot? Yeah, we've got to go to the people on this one. The the other question that I have personally, of course, as like an adult, is who's inside there. I don't think they're allowed to say, right? There's a whole documentary on being a mascot. They're, like, sworn to secret. It's like a secret society. So we, we like, last year during the spring, Denny Borges is now at the middle school, but he was the AD here at St. Clair High. We kind of, like, did a little bit of an informal, like, who should be the Saints mascot? Yeah. And a lot of us came up with Paul Short. 
Oh, it may be him. <laughs> Guidance Counsel- counselor. He would have been who we would have picked in high school, yeah. and he's a counselor there now. No surprises. Yeah. Even though I got to say, no disrespect to whoever Sparty's saying right now, uh, it's not Paul because no. they don't have the, they don't, they're not like all over the place. <laughs> Correct. The, I'm sure Sparty Saint will find his rhythm at a certain point. <laughs> He's feeling it out right this now. A, yeah, this is a trying out process. you got to come into your own as a, a mascot. He's got an escort from the principal, too. I don't know if that, I don't know if you get that throughout your tenure. You gotta, yeah. Yeah. Got to earn it. Yeah, or maybe it'll be like real Sparty. There's multiple people inside there. Could have that, yeah. Like appearances. Yeah. All right. Third down and four. <laughs> I had to have a little fun with, with the Saint mascot. Third down and four for the Saints offense. Farkas in the gun. Got a man to his left. Couple guys bottom of your screen. Couple guys top of your screen. Really out spread out here. Farkas under pressure once again. He's trying to keep it. He gets out of the tackles, and he's finally brought down once again by the Mariner defense. Looks like a tackle on the play there by number one for Marine City, and that's Grant Westrick. And he's back in the game then because he was out and looked like he couldn't put any weight on anything. Farkas got all the way out to the 20, so that's going to bring up about fourth down and five. Looks like Pennywell is going to be back there to punt it once again for the St. Clair offense. It's interesting. That, oh, that's right. Muscat just went out, so now it's yep. going to be Atkinson as the guy catching the punts. Muscat's been back there prior to this. This looks like a pretty good boot here from Pennywell. Going to land at about the 41. Rolls. Atkinson gets uh, tries to get the Saints out of there. This thing rolls all the way down to the 24-yard line. Nice job there by Jack Wiegand letting it come to its own stop. Sometimes guys on special teams get a little antsy and go pick that thing up early. Wiegand lets it settle, and, a, yeah, a nice play again. Cooper Pennywell. Is that a 46-yarder? That's excellent. Not a math major. So Marine City going to take the football back. 5.54 to go here in the second quarter. We're still tied at 7. Had a punt return for a touchdown, and then St. Clair eventually responded with a couple of turnovers forced on defense. And then Braden Shulk on the good side of a Ben Farkas touchdown pass. Osterlund behind center here for Mariners. Rolling to his right. Looks like he'll keep this one. He's got a lot of grass in front of him, a lot of green. Forced out of bounds at about the 35, 36 Yard line should be a gain of about 10 and move the chains. I like the toughness there from Lincoln Osterland. He rolls out. He's easily got the first down. I think nine times out of 10 you see a quarterback kind of just shuffle their feet to the right, get out of bounds. He kind of lowered his shoulder, stayed in, and took on the defensive player there. Kind of like that. It is a Mariner first down. The ball is on their own 36-yard line. Osterlund under center here, sends a man in motion, heading right at your screen here, hands it off, first man through. Looks like that's going to be number five, Anwar Sufyan. It looked like Gabriel there on the stop in the middle, number four. A couple yards gained there on the play. Second down and eight now for Marine City. Also notice that the Mariner boat made a trip to the other sideline. Another handoff here. Another couple yards gained there. Gain of about three on the play. Should bring up about third and four, third and five. Eyes were playing tricks on me there. And Suffian did a nice job of getting upfield a little bit further than I initially thought. There was a pile behind him. He left that in his wake. Got it to third and five. Looks like Coach Letson's going to talk about it. So a timeout, Marine City. I would I would be intrigued what happened on the play that Muscat got hurt of what happened there with timeouts. It did look like they charged Marine City with one. I Either way. I'm not sure. It looked like when that happened, whether it was just out of concern or if Coach Letson was really trying to call a timeout, right. he was out on the field pretty quick, almost like he called the timeout. Right. I don't know if they got, got it for injury. Nonetheless, we have one here. This one was certainly one. And the other piece to that that you just mentioned is I haven't seen Paul Muscat come back onto the field. And obviously, as this game progresses, we're going to keep our eyes peeled to see if he comes back because, you know, he's a featured back in this offense and it just leaves you with one less option if you're the Mariners. So 4.46 to go here. It's third down and five. Obviously, the Mariners value this possession here big time. This time Osterlund rolling to his right, looking. He's got a man out there, sends it out, and this one is caught. Really interesting route there. Like Atkinson again. 
Atkinson kind of ran an in and then spun on him, went to the outside over the top. And I can't be said enough, really nice ball there by Lincoln Osterlin. Yep. Hit Atkinson in stride for the first down big play. And the Mariners kind of needed one. It's 7-7, seven to seven, but the Mariners scored on a punt return. So that's the biggest play they've had offensively yet. Mariners rush up to the line. Handoff first man through here by Osterlin. Met pretty quickly by a host of Saints. Phillips, Gained first guy. Maybe a couple. Josh Phillips was the first guy there. The penalty on the place. A lot of guys excited up here in the booth, so something after the whistle must have happened. I was looking down to be my own spotter here on the roster. I'm not sure. I didn't see the extracurriculars. It does look like it's going to be on the Saints. So it's going to give them a first Nobody's down. moving quite yet. Yeah, they looks like they're going to walk this off in favor of the Mariners. If I had to guess, there was a, f a foul of some sort maybe on Carter Peterson. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there, but it did look like Luke Gabriel was kind of giving him a little grief after the play. Oh, well, certainly. I mean, if that's what happened, I, you know, if it's a dead ball and it's just something that somebody got angry and acted out, that just hurts everybody. I didn't obviously see it. If it's live and it's a mistake, right? you know. Sometimes you got to just rein in the aggression a little bit. But. Osterlin rolling to his right. The pass is complete. Knocked out of bounds there by Nesbitt. Nonetheless, another Cooper Mariner. Letson on the catch, if I have to guess. Kind of ran that one earlier to Letson on first yep. down. They go back to that well. It is a Mariner first down. It's going to be first down and goal here from the St. Clair 8-yard line. Right at four minutes to go here in the second quarter at East China Stadium. Osterlin takes the snap, hands it to the second man through. Met quickly there in the backfield. Tackle on the play there by 62. That's Will Schroeder. I'm going to step on you here, but for the people at home, I do think we actually have third down now. Third and third and about four. Yes, you are right. All right they didn't, they I didn't reset the score, it. I looked at the scoreboard. Oh, yeah. You're going to get third and four here in a big spot. Saw the extra point. I think Cooper Letson kicks him. He's capable of making this. You wonder if the Mariners would entertain a field goal try. I don't know if it's going to matter. It looks like he's brought down short on the play. Ellis made the tackle. Mariners hustling up to the line of scrimmage here. First down and goal from about the one and a half, two yard line. I think Ellis has a stinger in his yep. shoulder. He should go down if he's hurt, but he's trying to stay up because the Mariners rushed. Yep. First and I goal. think that was Owen, hurry Jake, Owen Jacobs, I believe, was the ball carrier on that last play. Looks like he's going to be the ball carrier once again, and he scores a Mariner touchdown. And another injured player on the field. This time it's for St. Clair. It looks like it's number four, senior Luke Gabriel. Gabriel's injured and obviously in some pain. So another time where a big play is kind of quieted because of an yep. opponent injury. Yep. So we'll make it 13-7. Marine City takes the lead back. 3-14 is what's left on the clock here in the second quarter. And Gabriel does not look too good down there. Looks like he may be able to get up. Initially, he was holding on to the right knee, right leg area. Those are always tough. Two yards out, everybody's just clashing there at the line of scrimmage. Just can get caught up so easily. You're trying to fill a gap, and somebody rolls the wrong way after a block. You just never know. Obviously, it looks like he's not feeling great either, not be able to put much weight on that right leg, so all the best to him as he gets looked at, and hopefully... Something he can recover from in, in short order. So play of the drive, you mentioned it. Marine City did not have an offensive touchdown. Really nothing too big time. Nothing too special on offense until they got a big time, big time completion to Parker Atkinson who scored their only other touchdown on a punt return. So Atkinson putting his stamp on this rivalry game. He's got an interception from earlier as well. And yeah, Atkinson with the big catch on that play and then probably just as equally as important was the personal foul that moved the Mariners up 15 yards after a second down their run gave them the automatic first down 
And then the Mariners did something a little different, which I liked, and I wonder if they're going to keep doing. They went tempo there on the Saints and just kind of pounded it right into the teeth of the defense to keep them off balance, and it was effective to the tune of six points and an extra one. So with 3.14 left here in the second quarter, it's Marine City 14, St. Clair 7. And for the Mariners, not only did they get a big play, but I guess simplistically – they held on to the football. Yeah, they didn't turn it over. They had a drive, and they finished it. Now if you're the Saints, you got 314. That's plenty of time to go and get a score, trying to get something explosive here in the kicking game. Looks like Ellis is shaking off whatever was ailing yep. him because he's back there now. He's with Jacob Luther. We saw the previous kick kind of bounced around, and Luther ended up taking a touchback. See how this one goes. Uh, the Mariner kickoff is up. Looks like it's going to be caught at the Saints' 15-yard line. Going to run right at your screen here. Looks like it's Luther. Going to be brought down at about the 20-yard line yeah, there by a host of Marine City Mariners. So Ben Farkas, sophomore quarterback, is going to come out and do kind of a three-minute drive here, or three-minute drill. Saints, with all three of their timeouts, looking at this, you know you get the ball coming out of half. It sure would be nice to get that football in a tied game uh, as opposed to down seven. So Saints going to look to put the pedal down and go get some points here. Everybody always talks about the two-minute drill, but right here this is basically a two-minute drill. you got 3.09 left on the clock. Saints got to go 80 yards for a touchdown to answer completely. Ellis is the ball carrier. Brought down for a no gain on the play. Like number nine there was one of the Mariners in on there, Nicholas Rufino. Good so a couple, a couple injuries early, and Gabriel's still over there getting worked on there by Jaeger Zemer, and Paul Muscat went out early for a couple drives to go for the Mariners, and I don't believe we've seen him come back on the field. We haven't seen him back. He is walking around a little bit over on the sideline. I, it looks like Westrick is still on the bench with him, so uh, not a lot of good news on the injury front thus far. Hoping people can stay healthy here. Three receivers to the right of Farkas. One man in the backfield to his left on his hip. Farkas looking to go to his left. Chucks it out there. There is a flag on the play. Schalk was the receiver on that side of the field for the Saints. It's incomplete. We'll check the flag. Wondering if we have an illegal formation. It here. sure seemed like that could easily be the case. There was a bunch of Saints down there. Somebody wasn't covered up where they were supposed yep. to be. And that's going to cost the Saints five yards. And it looks like maybe Coach Bishop and the Saints will call timeout as well. And it looks like yep. the Mariners declined that penalty. Okay. And that might have been a good play there. Instead of giving the Saints yeah. an extra down right. and, and losing the five, I think they just said, you know what, you got third and ten, and if yep. you don't get it, you're going to have to punt it, and we got time to possibly get score. Get the ball so back and do something with it, absolutely. I like the Mariners declining there. I think that's the right play. So Coach Bishop and the Saints did take time out there, get themselves reset. Mentioned earlier, both these teams one and one on the season so far. Last week, St. Clair bounced back with a 22-2 win over Lincoln. They did open the season with a loss against Richmond. Marine City opened up with a 40-20 loss against Armada. But then last week blew it, the doors open against Kloss, and 62-3 was the final there. Took out their anger on the uh, yeah. Trojans from Kloss and Mariners don't lose a lot, but I, don't, I wouldn't want to be the team on the, the, the schedule the following week when they do. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope, last week was a bad time to be on the schedule coming off that Armada game. and Now both teams here in pretty good dogfight in the first half. Farkas drops back to pass, looks over the middle towards Ellis. There was an official in the area. Looked like the pass maybe a little bit out front anyways, but either way made it a little bit tougher. The pass is incomplete, and we're going to have fourth down and 10 with 2.15 on the clock. Saints didn't kill a whole lot of clock. Not a whole lot of production there on that drive. No production, no clock eating. So now you're in a position where you got to come out here and in the waning moments of the first half, punt it back to the Mariners and give Parker Atkinson yeah. an opportunity to touch the football. So Atkinson back there once again. I think that might be Grant Westrick back there with him. Punt again here by Cooper Pennywell. He's been busy, and Atkinson has it. He runs into his own man, 
Has to cut back. Runs into the official. This official's making an impact. Last couple plays. Oh, big time cutback here by Atkinson. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that was his helmet. Was that a helmet? That was a helmet. That's a Saint helmet. And everybody in the press box felt like we did. It was Bryce yeah. G's helmet that flew off, and everybody thought it was the football. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot went on there. The official got a half tackle, and I think ultimately Bryce G finished finished the play. And the result is the Saints kind of pinned the Mariners back a little bit deeper than I thought they were going to. Yep. So first down and 10 for Marine City on their own 37-yard line. They are up 14-7. Biggest factor so far on any of the details is 157 on the clock for both teams. Mariners with just one timeout left. Osterlund takes the snap, turns to his left, hands it off. First man through, makes a couple guys miss, had a big hole, leaning all the way forward. This time it's a carry there by number 18. That's Cameron Maluski once again. Gabriel was back out on the field. He's limping back off, and another Saint is actually down as well. Officials blow this play dead with 150 on the clock. It is a Mariner first down. You saw Luke Gabriel. I think that was an opportunity for him to go give it a shot. Right. And I don't think he liked what he felt when he tried to be explosive on that right knee. I saw him get it wrapped. Right. Now He's I had back a hard on the bench here. Yeah. And you can see he was disappointed when yep. he ran off that leg wasn't cooperating. Now I'm not sure who's down now. No, I'm not either. With a minute 50 to go, this feels like a pretty critical defensive opportunity here for the Saints. Got to get a stop here and go into halftime. Just down the one score, getting the ball back. Mariners offense does feel like it's starting to find its rhythm just a little bit. Well, that's the hard part. No matter which side you're on here, right, the Mariners did have something going. The fumble was a nice play. Right. For their offense. You almost have to look at it like if he didn't fumble that ball, that that drive may have been a lot different. Had something going there. So the injured player here for the Saints. Looks like that was Avery Cody. Walking off under his own power with both legs underneath him, so that's a positive sign. So it's a Mariner first and down and 10 from their own 47-yard line. Minute 50 on the clock here. Marine City 14, St. Clair 7. Osterlin back under center. He's got a couple guys in the backfield. Takes the snap, turns, rolls to his right, looking to pass. Has a man out in the open. This time it's number 84. That's Colin Gabler out there. Another big Mariner gain. And now a penalty after the play. Gabler was out of bounds. And I didn't see the number, but somebody in a blue jersey went and hit him extra. And they're going to get 15 tacked on to the end of this play. So they're right in business, and they got plenty of time to do it. Yep, personal foul against St. Clair. So the ball would have been right about the St. Clair 30, and they're going to walk this thing all the way down to the St. Clair 15. And with a minute 44, not ideal. Not ideal at all. And again, another self-inflicted wound, a blown coverage, and then a penalty to boot. Osterlin once again under center, takes the snap, hands it to the first man through. Met pretty quickly this time by the Saints. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe picked up a yard. Trying to catch numbers here yeah, as they come tough. through. I think that might have been Muscat. No, nope, that's three. That's, that's Evan, Evan Jones. Jones. I think Muscat and Westrick are still paired up over here on the Oh, mansion. yeah, okay. But there are several slim numbers coming out of the Mariners' sideline now yes. when you're seeing three and – once again, this time he turns to his left hand, hits the second man through, makes a man miss, pulls up. This time tackled by Larry Warziniak. Looked like Owen Jacobs on the carry again. He had the touchdown on the last drive under this same format. Marine City body. going quick with a big body. They're just going to let him eat up the middle. Once again, this time he's met pretty quickly. Looked like Warziniak was one of the Saints in there once again. And yeah, Warziniak right there. Mariners, Mariners going to hustle up and get back to the line of scrimmage. Down. Big play here. 
And they're going to give it to him again. He tumbles, oh, he tumbles his way. I think he's got I it. I think he might have picked up the first down. Top clock is ticking. We're at 41 seconds to go. Now the Mariners now are Marine going to Marine City takes a timeout. I believe that's their last one here of the first half. And it's going to be first down and goal for Marine City. They're up 14-7 here in the second quarter. So short on time here, but... Marine City takes their last time out. They know they've got four cracks at getting it into the end zone, and they know how important it is. I'd be hard-pressed to believe that they're not going to just continue with that tempo and either force St. Clair to call a timeout to recover and get their subs in or just keep pounding the ball with Jacobs right in that same exact spot. It seems to be getting them three, four yards a crack, and they've only got three, four yards to go. So 41 seconds on the clock. It will be first down and goal from the St. Clair three-yard line. Looks like Jones is in the backfield once again for Marine City with Muscat over there on the bench, still injured. Osterlin under center, going to turn to his left, hand it off. Marine City touchdown. That time it was Van Deviver, it looked like. Around that side, gets six. And a big turn of events. So the Saints with the football and an opportunity to go down, score, and take it to half. Ultimately at the punt. And now they're going to find themselves down at least two scores heading into the half. 27, Marine City on top. Extra point coming up here for the Mariners. 21 here. Looks like he's going to kick this one away. Land in Augusta. And the kick is up and good, make it 21-7. Marine City on top, 38 seconds to go here in the second quarter. When watching high school football here on CTV, Tom Brenner and Brad Robbins with you here. Thanks for tuning in. Another edition of Battle for the Bell. If you've ever been here to the stadium, you can, you'll can you know on the northwest corner of the track, the Bell sits waiting its winner. The end of the game, whoever takes this one gets to run down and ring the bell. Yep. Certainly a big deal to all these players. Big opportunity to capture the bell and get to hold on to that trophy for the year. Tom, they, they actually, um, you had said good, but I think oh. the extra point sailed a little right, and it's 20 to 7. So it's just a semblance of a break that, for the Saints that, there. That, is, that looked big. like a great kick, but I thought I caught a no good signal out of the corner of my eye, and as I look at the board, it must have been what yeah. I saw. So the Mariner kickoff is away. Saints going to return this one. Looks like it's Ellis. Makes a man miss. Gets to the 30. Cuts it back 35. Still on his feet. Still on his feet. 40-45. Knocked out of bounds at about the 46-47. Saints faithful calling for a late hit. Looks like Ellis might have been out of bounds when he took the hit, but those are always going to be tough ones when he's, he's fighting his he way up the sideline. He was engaged in, yeah. you know, I understand what they're asking for, yeah. but I think the engaging of the tackle started and the finishing happened after a little bit different than being out and then start to engage a guy. Nonetheless, 29 seconds to go. Saints still holding on to two of their timeouts. They're going to have to find something most likely in a big chunk through the air. And the biggest thing will be can they protect Farkas long enough for him to see downfield? Aside from that one play that went for Pater, they haven't really been able to do that. So 29 seconds, see if the Saints try to chip away here and at least give themselves a shot. Maybe maybe they'll take a shot at a field goal here. Farkas rolling to his left, looking downfield. Stops just inside the hatch, looking deep. Has a man out there. A lot of contact. No penalty on the plot. Now a flag comes in. It's hard for us to see like from he was this far. It looked like that was Shulk out there. And it looked like maybe, and you know, obviously that official that threw that flag has a better vantage point than than we do being sure. right on top of it. The only thing I could see is running in pretty good stride with him. It's possible that they started to pull on that jersey a little bit early uh, and a pretty good ball there from Farkas. So in high school football, you're only going to get 15 yards, yep. not the spot foul, but a significant chunk nonetheless, and it only took seven seconds to get it. That may be the more important part. It's now on the 39-yard line. Of Marine City, St. Clair with the football. They got 22 seconds left on the clock here in the second quarter. They're down 20 to seven. Nesbitt, bottom of your screen. Shulk, top of your screen, split out wide. Ellis in the backfield. It looks like with Farkas. 
Man in motion for the Saints. That was Luther in the background. Farkas looking to pass, looking out there for Nesbitt, incomplete. So second down and 10 now. 17 seconds is what remains here on the clock. Saints ripping through a lot of their, uh, <laughs> their passing playbook here in the first half. Trying them all. Nesbitt Marcus. obviously has pretty good size. Tried to go after him. Both receivers on the edge for St. Clair. And you add in Pennywell, it's pretty big targets there. Farkas is a sophomore, first year starting at quarterback here on the varsity level, takes a snap in the shotgun, looking to his left to pass, has a man out there. Luther makes the catch, but he's met quickly there. Looked like that was number nine, Nicholas Rufino on the tackle. And the clock is still going. Looked like maybe it got all the way down to two seconds left on the clock here, and the Saints will call timeout. They had two remaining there. They had two remaining. They elect to just save it, save the other, and then just take it to the half. I think maybe the, the thought is they only thought they were going to get one additional play anyway. They didn't want to leave any time on the clock if something went poorly. So now you just want to make sure that obviously it would be a beautiful thing if you can get some points here somehow. But what you can't do is make a mistake. You can't throw a pick six. I mean, I'll, I'll say it, right? It's like a golf announcer saying the word shank. You're Hold not on supposed to do it. You can't turn it over then go to the, a house call here. Uh, so you can opt to throw it. I don't know that Farkas can throw this all the way into the end zone. So maybe we'll get to see the hook and ladder. I don't know. Two seconds left on the clock here in the second quarter. Marine City 20, St. Clair 7. This is likely our last play here in the first half. It's third down and 13. Ball on the Mariner 42. Farkas in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Looking left, scanning the defense. Under a little bit of pressure. Throws it over the middle. Picked off here by Marine City. Look out. Sufian, Marine City right? cutting back. Still on his feet. Still on his feet. Looking to the middle of the field. And he is going to be brought down eventually by Cooper Pennywell. Saints I imagine most there. Saints fans, coaches, and players, their hearts sank a little bit there for a second. Mariners kind of opened up that umbrella of defensive backs, get the pick, and give everybody a reason to hold their breath. Mariners showed some, some metal there in the last half of that second quarter and opened this up a little bit. Saints going to have to make some adjustments. So we're hitting halftime here at East China Stadium. Our score, Marine City 20, St. Clair 7. We'll see you for second half action after these messages. Close to home, a place that cares about you and your family? Well, Magnus Hiring. Hi, my name is Jennifer Riley. I'm the Human Resources Manager here at Magna Electric Vehicle Structures in St. Clair. Our team is growing fast, our facility is expanding, and we're looking to hire about 900 new, new team members. So if you're interested in opportunities in engineering, skilled trades, production operation, or any other position, you can go to magna.com slash careers. That's magna.com slash careers. Now, taking the field, the Marching Saints of St. Clair High School. In 2023, the Marching Saints want to take you back in time to the 1990s. Our show focuses on the rock that took the world by storm and expressed the attitudes of a generation. Grunge bands remain popular today and the music lives on as an important musical contribution to the sonic history of America. Drum Majors is the band ready to rock. If you are of a certain age, you remember the first time you listened to the album 10 by Pearl Jam. They still tour today, but the band made their mark with hits like Porch, Alive, Black, Jeremy, and our opener, Even Flow.
Originally formed in Walnut Grove, California in 1984, The Offspring hit it big with their 1994 song, Come Out and Play. Ladies and gentlemen, the Marching Saints. The 2023 Marching Saints are under the direction of Michael Bolts, ably assisted by Scott Fryer, drilled by Mark Waymeyer, wind instruction by Dave Sanchez, percussion instruction by Jacob Lamb and Jasmine Bryce. Drum majors are Audrey Azanero, Ash Curry, and Anna Pat Salas. We have more 90s rock to share with you later this season and are looking forward to another great season here at East China Stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, the Marching Saints. Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present the 2023 Marine City High School Mariner Marching Band under the direction of Stephen C. Fox. The Marine City High School Mariner Marching Band would like to welcome you to East China Stadium. This evening, we're bringing the magic back to halftime by highlighting a portion of our 2023 field show. We're sharing two parts of our trilogy of magical beings from TV, stage, and film. The Mariner Marching Band proudly presents Wizards, Witches, and Sorcerers. The Mariner Marching Band is under the direction of drum majors Abigail Pettinger, Molly McKay, and Abigail Pilon. Drum majors, are we ready to conjure up a magical performance? Our trilogy begins with the words of the great Albus Dumbledore. Ah, music, a magic beyond all we do here. Featuring music from two of the biggest movie franchises of all time, we honor the great, wise, and fearless wizards. Featuring bell soloist Molly McKay and mellophone soloist Alton Fox, Assistant Drum Major Abigail Pilon directs the Mariner Marching Band, and we're off to see the wizard. 
from the Wizard of Oz and Hedwig's theme and Nimbus 2000 from Harry Potter. The next part of our trilogy lets us explore the mystical arts. But please remember the advice of Dr. Stephen Strange. They really should put the warnings before the spells. Whether studying under the great Sorcerer Yensid or serving as the Sorcerer Supreme, we are certain that Drum Major Molly McKay will lead the Mariner Marching Band in a spellbinding performance of the Sorcerer's Apprentice from Disney's Fantasia and Strange Days Ahead from Marvel's Doctor Strange.
ladies and gentlemen, the 2023 Marine City High School Mariner Marching Band. Welcome back to high school football here on CTV. Tom Brenner, Brad Robbins, back ready for third quarter action. Battle of the Bell at East China Stadium. Mariners take the first half. They're up 20 to seven. Brad was pretty back and forth, and this is still an absolute a ball game that either team can win. Yeah, Saints get the opportunity to get the football. They had a chance, you know, if you didn't catch the first half and you're just tuning into the second, they had a chance. Saints had the ball about two minutes left, down one score. Uh, weren't really able to move the ball or run enough clock with about three minutes and nine seconds left. Marine City ends up getting the ball on a punt, bringing it down after two costly 15-yard penalties on the Saints. Uh, end up getting an additional score to make it 20-7 to and a missed extra point. Some injuries playing a factor here. Uh, Westrick went down with a lower body injury and struggling to move around a bit. Paul Muscat out for the Mariners right now, and then uh, Luke Gabriel looks like he suffered an injury that's not going to allow him to return so be interesting to see how the second half unfolds and obviously the Saints want to put something on the board here and make an answer and get right back into the football game defense has been doing a nice job again for the Saints Mariners kicking it deep St. Clair receives the football to start the second half looks like this is Luther he's got some open space gets to the sideline he's at the 45 50 Luther knocked out of bounds there by number 14 for Marine City, Parker Atkinson. But the Saints start the second half with a nice special teams play and big time field position to start the third quarter. Give him a pretty good spot here as well. They're gonna mark him oh. inside the 45 oh. yard line to the 44. I'll be honest, huh? I think the official yeah. got a, it was a little late getting here to yeah. mark that spot and saw where Luther slid while he was out of bounds right. and just marked it there. I'm sure the Saints will take the extra four or five yards. Yeah, maybe six. St. Clair will take it. They're on the Mariner 44. Farkas in the gun once again. Two receivers top of your screen. One bottom. One man as on Farkas's hip. Man in motion here is Ellis. Farkas looking to pass. Looking over the middle. Looks to his right. Has a man wide open. It's caught. Looks like Liam Nesbitt it is. And it's a St. Clair first down. That's been a, that was a perfect illustration of what the Saints need to do. We've seen uh, when Farkas has a little bit of time to process and find the next guy and not just a check down, pretty effective. When he's moving his feet and there's people in his face and just not as much time in the pocket, a couple of picks, been a little disastrous. So Saints going to have to mix in the run. I think up front the Saints offensive line had, honestly, one of their best halves uh, we've seen in a while. So they got to lean on that a little bit, get that proper mix. First and 10 from the Mariner 31. Man in motion is Pettinger. Handoff here, Ellis gets to the right sideline. Brought down there by 55, that's Jeremy Westrick. Called his name quite a bit. He was one of those guys bothering Farkas and on a couple consecutive plays in the backfield as well. He did a good job in the run. We've said his name quite a bit for the Mariners. Pettins are going to sub out here for the Saints. Been a handful of years since St. Clair knocked off the Mariners. Looking to get that back on track here tonight in the battle for the bell. Man in motion is Ellis. Farkas looking to his left to pass. Gets it out there. It is incomplete. Looked like it was complete for a second to Shulk, but it is dropped, and it's an incomplete pass. Yeah, pretty nice defensive play there. Kind of coming from behind after Shulk had it in his mitts. A good hit. Kind of swung the arm, knocked it free to force an incomplete pass. Saints bumming because I think that was one of those intermediate stop routes that get you a first down and moves the sticks. Now they've got third and fairly long. 
So third and about six or seven here from the 27-yard line of Marine City. This ought to be interesting to see. Hopefully the Saints pick up a first down, but if they don't, I'd imagine they keep the offense on the field. Farkas with two men behind him. Turns to his right, looking to pass after the fake ball up in the air. Cooper Pennywell can't haul it in. It's incomplete. A little play action pop pass. Saw that in week one. It worked really effectively. Obviously, Cooper Pennywell is somebody that they're keying on. And nice pass break up there by the Mariners. Now it's going to be fourth down and fairly long, and you're in that kind of feeling like you got to pass the football situation. When you don't complete those intermediate routes, you're behind the sticks. It makes it hard to be effective in the run game. Farkas once again still in the gun. He's got Ellis and Luther in the backfield with him. 10.39 to go here in the third quarter. Feels like a big early moment in the second half. Fourth down and six. Saints going for it here. Offense is at least on the field. and looks like Coach James Bishop and the Saints are going to have to take a timeout. I think that was intentional. I think they were trying to draw him offside and they wanted to call a timeout to talk about what they want to run here. I'm sure they feel like it's a pretty critical play. Fourth and sixth on that first drive. We mentioned when they received the ball that it's a big drive. They got all the way across the 50 on the kick return and they don't want to squander the opportunity. So maybe it's just that feeling that if you don't get this one, you might not need that timeout later. So you got to get it across, get yourself a first down. And really, it all goes back to that nice pass breakup that Marine said he had. I think that was a, a big, you know, bigger play uh, at the time than maybe we realized because I think that would have kept moving the chains and kept the Saints on time. So this is a big time moment here early on. Saints take a timeout going forward on fourth and six in Marine City territory. Farkas in the gun. Takes the snap, looking to his right. A little bit under pressure. He is under pressure. Takes a hit, completes to Pennywell, but I think he's short. Oh. They give him, looks like they're going to give him the 20. Official on the far side is coming over to I'm not sure. discuss something. I, he was pretty adamant it was a first down, but it looks like the ball, oh, they're putting, he was initially standing on the 19, or the 21. The official with the football looked like he was looking more like the 21-yard line. In fairness, from our vantage point, it is hard to yes. decipher kind of these angles. We got the glare of the window a little bit here as well. So a brief discussion with the official. It looks like he must have thrown a flag. Delay of game on Marine City. And I'm so. not sure if it was something from the sideline. That's what the discussion was. So it wasn't a spot issue. He yeah. had thrown a flag, and it was hard to see. He came over. That's going to advance. But this, but this penalty technically, it, as it's long a as they're confident in spot, it would, if, if it was. I think it's a dead ball penalty. So they're going to give yeah. the Saints the first down on the play, and then I think you got to tack on after. an additional yeah. half the distance. And it's an unsportsmanlike conduct call. And I don't know if that came from the sideline. And I believe it was a first down on the Pennywell catch. Because yep, I correct. think, and I now think it's half if the technically speaking, the if he was short there, I believe the Mariners would have had the football and the penalty would have it would have been, been enforced the on their direction. offensive Correct, side. they would have gone backwards. Yeah. So they gave him the first down. Dead ball foul moves at half the distance to the goal. Saints operate, catch a break, but also made a little bit of their own luck. That that timeout pays yes. off for the Credit Saints. Credit to Coach Bishop and the Saints there. They pay off their timeout. This time it's Ellis in. Payner. On the ground. Payton Ellis in for a St. Clair touchdown. Make it 20-13. to 13. The Saints strike back here to start the second half. Extra point here coming up becomes more important now that the Mariners have missed one, but the Saints did exactly what they needed to do, march down the field, and the Saints cash in. Having to use that timeout was a big deal. That play that ended up going to Cooper Pennywell was magnified by the fact they had to use a timeout, but now that they got the six points, totally worth it. Great call. Looking to get within, well, get tighter. You're, in, you're within a score no matter yeah. what here. Get but tighter earlier, and put you ahead of it. Earlier, I thought the Mariners made it the extra point. It was no good. Technically, right now, at least here in the early going, that matters. Saints are only down seven now, but it looks like they might keep the offense on the field and go for two. Oh, they're going to, sorry, they are kicking the extra point. Mentioned some injuries in this football game. That might have an impact on some of these special teams. Some guys might not be in and available or ready to play where they think. Nonetheless, the Saints rush a guy on, get him in formation, and kick the ball through the uprights. So that's a big-time sequence for the Saints. 
convert a fourth down, score on the ground, get the extra point. All of a sudden, they're only down six. Marine City 20, St. Clair 14. Give credit there. I mean, we didn't mention it all that much, but Jacob Luther on the kick return. Good job by yeah. St. Special Teams to start that drive at about the 44-yard line uh, of the Mariners, and they march right down, get a couple of nice plays, and then Peyton Ellis with a tough run finishes it off. And just like when the Saints gave up a touchdown with a costly uh, penalty, the Mariners do the same and respond in kind, and now it's a one-score game. So 10-23 is what's left on the clock here in the third quarter. Marine City going to get this football back as the Saints look to kick this thing off. I imagine Parker Atkinson is back there once again for Marine City. Always got four guys back there. Kick is up, heading toward the bottom of your screen. It's fielded, and the Mariners are going to toss this thing back. Atkinson out of his hands. He's going to hand it off to number 18. Maluski. Coming back, and that is a nice play there. Cameron Maluski did have the football, and the Saints do a nice job of staying disciplined and bringing down the ball carrier. Much better, and then you see, you know, without Muscat being back there, without Westrick being back there, you got that kind of second group of guys to perform the starburst. Not as many reps, not as clean at this time of the year. That's going to play in. Maluski got the ball. That one was a much more obvious play, mm -hmm. I think, than we're accustomed to. Saints not fooled and do a good job securing a tackle. So the Mariner offense here, led by Lincoln Osterling, going to come back on the field. They've got it on their own 23-yard line. couple men in the backfield. Handoff looks like it's to the first man through, brought down pretty quickly. Carry on the play there by number nine, Nicholas Rafino. Picked up maybe a yard or two on the play. Defensive front from the Saints. Been pretty, pretty stout. They've have struggled a little bit when Marine City goes tempo. They've struggled with that a touch, but otherwise, I really thought the guys up front for the Saints doing a really, really nice job. Elijah Naylor in particular. I know we've called Carter Peterson's name a few times as well. Handoff this time going around the right side. Man in motion there took the handoff was Maluski. Still only a couple yards picked up there. Nice discipline once again by the Saints defense. A lot of ground covered there by Maluski, but not a lot gained in terms yep. of going forward. Pretty nice job by the Saints staying disciplined, stringing that thing out. I saw Bryce G heading out there, kind of making it, take the, taking him take the long way home. Saw G make a play earlier on Parker Atkinson. His helmet flew off. That time he keeps all of his equipment. So third down and eight here for the Marine City offense on their own 25-yard line. Snap is taken, rolling down to his left as Osterlin tipped there. Looked like that was tipped there by number 52, Carter Peterson. Big time play there by the senior. Really nice play. It's something that, you know, if you're catching it on your screen at home, interesting that Parker Atkinson supposed to be running a, a streak, so to speak, and he's just blocking the defensive back the entire way down to clear space for Cooper Letson. Uh, that would be something that, since the outcome was good, I may alert the <laughs> officials to if right. I'm Brian Tapman. Say, so just so you know, because they had no intentions of throwing it to Atkinson that time. His sole job was to move the defensive backs. Not a very good little pooch kick here by Marine City. Going to stay in their own territory. So back-to-back -back possessions to start the second half. The Saints have the football in very, very favorable Marine City territory. About the same spot as last time. And right now, if you're the Saints, you're feeling pretty confident. Got some good things going for you. And you need to start to be able to lean on Marine City's defensive front a little bit. Offensive line's done a pretty good job. First and 10 ball sits at the Mariner 48-yard line. Nesbitt, bottom of your screen. Shulk, top of it. Sophomore Ben Farkas in the gun. A couple men in the backfield with him there. Going to get himself under center now very quickly. Takes the snap, hands it off. No, he keeps it. He keeps the ball. Farkas has the ball, and he's going to lose maybe a yard here. Whistle blows. Bunch of, bunch of Mariners in there on the play making stuff happen. Interesting formation. Saints looked like they were set up standard. Farkas rushed up to get under center, then kind of made a fake pitch, then a fake option and tried to keep it. Showed some pretty good strength to stay up and get a no gain. Um, it's hard to say what his two options were there on what looked like you know, pitch option looks. So they leave the ball right where it started. Second down and 10 from the 48-yard line. 
Farkas once again under center here for St. Clair. Saints scored on their opening drive of the third quarter. They're down six, 2014 Marine City on top. Farkas turns, hands it off. Looks like it's Ellis going to lean, dive forward for maybe a two-yard gain. Just gets a couple. Saints trying to get some things going on the ground. Saints offense, as you mentioned, done a pretty nice job so far in this game. Cooper Secord there. Helping up his ball carrier after that play. Clock ticking, and we're heading towards seven and a half to go here in the third quarter. Third down and eight. For all the St. Clair Saints. All game long, this has been a passing down. They've really not tried to run it and chunk this. Let's see if they try something a little bit different. Farkas in the gun, looking to his right. Throws it out there toward the St. Clair sideline. Incomplete. He took a shot there. Looked like the... Mariner bringing pressure was number 48, Owen Jacobs. He's been all over the place offensively and defensively tonight. So it looks like the punt team's going to come on. They're probably going to opt for that option punt with Ellis. You saw that when it was more toward midfield. Ellis with a little bit of a rugby yep. option. And when it was deeper, they used a little bit better, better leg in Cooper Pennywell. You've got Ellis back deep. Mariners sending, looks like Vandeviver. And Rafino maybe. So a little bit different look as it's not Atkinson. Ellis takes it, rolling a little bit, still has the football he's midfield. Gonna looks like he's going to keep this one. Gets himself to the 40. Matt dives I forward. I think got he got it. a first down he here. He got the first down. Absolutely did. So a little bit of a personal gamble, right? Yeah. Uh, Ellis kind of bet on himself there. Saw enough of a crease and thought he was tough enough to get through yeah. about one arm tackle, and he was right. So yeah. first down for the Saints, big play. For you Lions fans at home, you know how important yeah. a fake punt can be <laughs> in a football game. Yeah. Not quite the same spot on the field, but impactful nonetheless. Keeps the Saints drive going. I don't know if we should be punished or given an award for not mentioning the Lions until halfway through the third <laughs> That's quarter. True. That's true. That's something both Marine City and St. Clair fans can unite around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with we get an award for being disciplined <laughs> and staying right. focused on the task at hand, which is the Mariners and Saints. Saints showing a little bit of confidence right now. Luther on a tough run, big hole, makes it easy. Kind of had that feeling. Saints leaning on the Mariners a little bit here as the third quarter wears on. Six and a half to go here in the third, second down and four. That was a gain of about five or six on that play there for St. Clair. Farkas has Luther back there with him once again. Nesbitt, bottom of your screen. Shulk at the top of it. Couple men up there. Pettinger's the man in motion. Hands it off. Luther once again gets to the 30. Still going. Has his legs driving. He's still going. Heading right down toward the 25-yard line. Gain of five or six. And this is going to be close to another St. Clair first down. It is. A good sight to see Coach Denny DeLore down on this. He's like the get-back guy, and he's actually having to work pretty hard to keep the Saints from getting a sideline warning right yeah. now. You can feel a little buzz on the blue sideline here in front of us. Six minutes to go now here in the third. Farkas gets his orders here from the sideline. Coach Bishop, of course, calling plays this year. Farkas has Luther back there once again. Nesbitt split out wide. Three receivers to the left of the formation here. Farkas looking to pass. Looks right. Has a man out there. It's Nesbitt. Nesbitt going back. He has he the football, it. and it's a St. Clair touchdown. Another example. A lot of time for Farkas. Good offensive front. Over the top. Good ball. Pay dirt. Nesbitt. Sophomore to a senior there. Saints tie this thing up at 20. With 5.33 to go here in the third, it's St. Clair 20, Marine City 20. St. Clair with a chance to take the lead with the point after touchdown. Seems like the locker room kind of subbed as the phone booth for Clark Kent, yeah. and the Saints came out as Superman here to start the third. This is exactly what they needed to do. Right in a football game, lots of momentum and a lot of confidence moving around on the Saints sideline now. So Connor Gunn out there to try to kick the extra point. High snap is brought down, and it looks like it's blocked here by Marine City. Oh, my. We stay at 20 points apiece here. 
with 5.33 to go in the third. So another so big teams special teams play. Point. Yeah. Yeah, so as you sit and you watch at home, I know a lot of the focus is going to go to the fact that Farkas has thrown a couple touchdown passes, what have you, but uh, big plays in special teams all day long, including the punters. you got yep. a fake punt by Ellis that goes for a big first down, leads to a touchdown. You've got a monster punt early in the football game for the Mariners that pinned the Saints deep. We've got missed extra points. We've got a punt return by Atkinson. So a lot of this happening in the special teams phase of the game. It's got us squared up here halfway through the third. You mentioned it. Jacob Luther got that other, the first drive of the second half going with a big kick return. And then give the offensive line and Jacob some credit there on that drive. They moved the football on the ground pretty nicely. Yeah, that was a statement drive for the Saints. They got the ball back. And if you're on the Saints defense, you've got a statement drive upcoming. Um, kind of got it in your grasp, so you want to just keep leaning and taking the belief away. So Marines are going to take the kick. This is Atkinson. He seems to always have the football. He hands it off. The first man through has it up the sideline, St. Clair's sideline. Right there was number 23. That's Austin Brown. Kind of bobbled it a little bit coming out of the starburst. Got a good chunk, though. Past That's one the of their 30. better kick returns of the day. Saints have done a pretty nice job of containing the kick returns. Punt return for a touchdown yep. was on a little reverse. That was when Muscat was healthy and in the yep. game as well. Provided a little extra deception. So sophomore Lincoln Osterland in the Mariner offense coming back on the field, trying to get something going here in the second half. Ball game is tied at 20, 528 on the clock. First down Marine City from their own 32. Handoff here, makes a man miss, makes another man miss. Nice looking run here. From number five, that's Answar Sufyan. Pretty nice job there by Larry Warziniak. Coming from the other side to track down the shifty Sufyan. But a good run there for the Mariners. A little momentum taking it to the Saints pressure. They had a lot of guys stacked in the box, and the Mariners still beat it. So Mariner first down. They move it up to their own 45-yard line. Osterlin takes the snap under center, hands this one off, leaning forward, diving across for gain of another four yards or so there. It is number five. Once again, Sufian. Get the feeling that the Mariners have found something they like to go to. I think just like left side toward us, off tackle. It's where they scored their last two touchdowns. It's where they kind of did the hurry up tempo, and now it's the spot they're attacking here consecutively. Let's see how the Saints, if they got to shift some personnel or if the Mariners just like that side of their offensive line a touch better. Here they go there right Wilson, again. Once again, right back to it. Mariners still moving that football. Another gain of four or so. File it under. If it ain't broke, don't fix yeah. it. So both teams actually, the Saints last drive, they kind of started getting something going there with the run game. Mariners coming back, trying to respond, keeping the football on the ground. So it brings up third and looks like a long two. It wouldn't surprise me a bit if you see 48 in that same spot. Handoff once again. Looks like this is going to be a Mariner first down, and that is once again good call there by you, partner. Owen Jacobs on the carry, and it is a first down Marine City. Not trying to go full Romo on you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> a little easier to predict here. Yeah. It just looks like that Coach Letson has found a spot he wants to attack. The other piece of that, maybe it's just a trust factor with the guy carrying the ball and the more experienced offensive lineman on that side. It's worked many times here tonight. So, of course, Marine City trying to keep that thing going here. First and 10 from the St. Clair 45. Osterlund has it rolling to his right, looking to pass. Gets it out there, pass. See if he caught that, if he brought it in. I think he may have. It is. Pretty nice looking grab there from our vantage point by Colin Gabler. He's got a few catches tonight. He's a target the Lincoln Osterland likes to throw to as they roll out that way. Picks up half of it there. And you know if they're going to pound the ball off the left side there. They're going to set that up and set that up until the Saints kind of overplay, and then they're going to counter off of it. That was one small example. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to go something bigger later. So second down and five. Osterland hands it off. Wide open spaces here all the way down to the 30-yard line. I think that was Maluski with the ball that time. Mariner first down. So now the Mariner offense seems to be finding a little bit of a rhythm here. 
Saints just need to hold strong. Lots of field left to defend. Can't take any silly penalties. Got to stick with it. First and 10 from the 30. Osterlund going to hand this off to the first man through and bouncing all the way down to the 25 for a gain about a solid four or five yards. Mariners offensive line kind of making their own statement here, though. You're right. The off line of scrimmage is moving backwards you know, pretty in pretty good chunks right now, just like the Saints did on their offensive drive. This is the first time I would say that front from St. Clair has shown vulnerability. Mariners rush up once again. Handoff once again here by Osterlin. Offensive line still chugging. They got to be starting to find their rhythm. Another gain of three or four on the play. Should bring up another third down and two. That is the case. We got two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Tied at 20. Battle for the bell at East China Stadium here on CTV. Wonder if the Mariners going to try something hard count here. You can see Coach Bishop. Yelling at his guys up front, watch the ball. This is a spot for it, and Darren Letson wants to talk about it. So second time out here, use of the half. One by the Saints, one by the Mariners. Early big moments here. A lot of players going down, a lot of guys cramping up, stretching out, trying to scratch and claw their way through this battle for the bell. Nice crowd for both sides. Maybe not one of the bigger ones we've seen, but it's still the seats are packed. Well, I think, in, you know, we'll be honest about the situation. The, the folks in our area are always going to come out uh, for this one, but I think I think the perception from the first couple of weeks, having both these two teams open at 0-1, it's not going to draw yeah. the out-of-towners. Yeah. Uh, there's some other games in the BWAC probably going to draw those. If you looked at the times Herald today, I don't even know that they used – this game in the picks, which should tell you all you need to know. Yeah. But for those of us oh. invested, it's a big deal. If that's the case, that's a, that should that should be a mistake. That's like this <laughs> game should be. I'm telling the truth. Wow. Take a look. And if you're a St. Clair Marine City fan that doesn't like that reality, I guess you know put the chip back squarely on your shoulder, <laughs> and we got to get some better games. The Mariners handed that one off that time on third and three. That was Maluski once again. Got real close to that down again. And he got it, so they're going to start fresh. Bryce G lost his helmet again, so he flies off. So first down and 10 for Marine City. They got it on the St. Clair 19-yard line. Be interesting to see how the Saints have adjusted to what I would call like tempo offense. You got to think Mariners going to start running it here just like they did at the end of the half. Osterlund had it. He's got a man wide open for a Marine City touchdown. The fake had everybody fooled. Osterlund rolled to his right. Man wide open. Mariners take the lead back. Hard to say, but I believe that was Cooper Letson. We've seen that route a couple times. But that time it was all about the play action. Everybody went yep. to that spot that they've been beating up. And you saw him go for a little bit bigger one there. And puts the Mariners back on top. And that's kind of one of those things. That's almost what happens when you pound the ball. Mariners had the ball going really good, running it. Saints get you playing forced. for it. Linebackers are forced to sell yeah. out into those gaps. Somebody forgot to pick up Cooper Letson, and they make them pay. So 27-20 with the extra point. Marine City back on top with a minute 16 to go here in the third. Exciting, exciting football game here on CTV. We thank you for watching us here. Whether you're watching on the app or on the site or on the old television. <laughs> if you're the Saints right now, this is not the the time to try and, or, or I guess, let the air come out of your balloon. You've come back. You put yourself in this football game. Still got some time here in the third quarter to get something going. And your offensive line and your offense in general has shown a little bit of life, more than they have, um, honestly, in the past couple seasons. I mean, they're at 20 points mm -hmm. going into the fourth. 20 points has been hard for them to get to. Yep. Um, and they've done it against a quality opponent. So they're going to keep that momentum going. They're right in a football game. And as you mentioned, the Saints had some good mojo going there on the sideline for a little bit. Got to do your best to not let that totally leave the building. It's an opportunity here for some of these guys on special teams to step up. Saw a big play last time. Luther going to get a shot at it again. Luther has it. He is at the 20-yard line. Tripped up and met pretty quickly there by... Marine City once again there looked like Maluski was one of the Mariners in on that play 
Saints will have it fairly deep in their own territory to start this drive off. Down seven. Saints were a little bit more balanced on that last drive. Made a few plays through the air, but also on the ground. It'll be interesting to see kind of how they start this off. It would be nice, you know, for the Saints to be able to run the football in a few chunks here, just like the Mariners did to them. So sophomore Ben Farkas and the Saints looking to answer the Mariners score. Farkas in the gun to start this drive off for St. Clair. Man in motion here. Looks like it's Ellis. It's a fake. Farkas looking to throw. Tries to get it out there off the hands of Ellis and incomplete. Trying to get something easy underneath, but right now nothing's been easy. Farkas kind of had to drop his arm angle to get it around the defensive end. And that forces the throw just kind of outside of the target and onto the turf. So second down and 10 now. Saints had it on their own 22-yard line. Liam Nesbitt, a senior, bottom of your screen. Braden Schulk, just a sophomore up at the top. Nesbitt is full one-on-one, -on -one, it looks like. They're not yep. even shading the safety to his side. Farkas takes it. He's looking Nesbitt's way. How off of Nesbitt's hands and drops incomplete. He was one on one, and he, that ball was right on target. Farkas took a lick after he threw it, but Nesbitt wants that one back yep. because it was just going to be him and number 23, Austin Brown, the sophomore for Marine City, in a wrestling match or a foot race. Looks like a little bit of miscommunication here on the Saints sideline as Farkas looks to get his orders from Coach Bishop and Brady Gleason. I don't see the play clock going here in the stadium. No, they're not. The back official is just starting to count, so you have 10 seconds. Farkas in the gun, looking to his left, now looking over the middle under some pressure. Ball batted out of the sky. See if I can get a look at the number. It looks like maybe 84. Colin Gabler made a nice play there for Marine City on third down. And that, that drive for the Saints was reminiscent of the one that they had with about three minutes left in the first half. And they had kind of an opportunity to maybe run some clock and move it. Weren't able to complete any passes. I think Saints there take 30 seconds off the clock, and they're going to have to punt it back to the Mariners still here with a whole minute left in the third. So Cooper Pennywell is going to be the punter on this one as the Saints look to boom this one down there. Coop gets this one to hit at about the 43-yard line. Going to roll a little bit down. Going to head toward the 35, and that's where it'll be. Mariners will have the football on their own 35-yard line. They've got a seven-point lead with 48 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Another good punt by Pennywell. Backs him up to a respectable spot. Going to make the Mariners work. Saints defense needs to come up big. That front's going to be tested again right away, I'm sure. I maybe just don't pay attention to it as closely as, like, I should. But it sure feels like the punt game tonight has played a major it's factor been massive. It's in been the massive. football game. Yeah, there's no question. Um, it's been critical. Marine City handoff here coming toward the Saints sideline. Knocked out of bounds and staying in bounds. Actually, there was Maluski. Tough running there by the senior Cameron Maluski. Paid for it a little bit, staying in extra. Yeah. Warzeniak made him earn it. Put him to the turf pretty hard. and Not a first down, just a little short. But a good chunk play nonetheless. And right now that's been the difference. The Mariners on the ground putting in a little work. And they're getting four, five, six plays. And they're going to take it to the fourth quarter and flip the field about it. Gain of about nine there brings up second down and one from their own 44. And it looks like Marine City may, oh, I think they're going to let this one run out. That's what's happening here. So the Mariners are going to take this one into the fourth quarter with a seven-point lead. Marine City, 27, St. Clair, 20. We're back with the fourth quarter in the battle for the bell on CTV after these messages. Thought about changing your job, finding a place to work that's close to home, a place that cares about you and your family? Well, Magnus Hiring. Hi, my name is David McCurdy. I work here at the Magna Electric Vehicles in St. Clair. I am a leak test lead working for production. 
Really enjoy coming to work every day. Uh, new opportunities to and different challenges each and every day. If you're looking for a great place to work, you got a great group of people here from the top down. Um, the culture is amazing. There's lots of opportunities to move up, um, and we're still growing. As the voice of Michigan student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere so the interscholastic athletes may thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive. Sportsmen. Welcome back to CTV. High School Football here with you. Battle for the Bell, start of the fourth quarter here. Marine City 27, St. Clair 20. Tom Brenner, Brad Robbins with you here on the call at East China Stadium. Marine City has the football at midfield, as you can see on our screen, brought to you there by all of our hard workers down there in the truck. Appreciate all the beautiful pictures they're bringing you tonight. Osterlin takes the snap and hands it off. No gain on the play on this one. Pretty good tackle there. Nice night so far. Looks like the tackle there was by Elijah Naylor. Do have an injured Saint on the play here. A notable, you know, play outside of the fact that, that we have a Saint down, but uh, that was maybe the first no gain by the Mariners running to that side. Yeah. And. 15 plays and that was a significant one you just take them out of their timing just enough you know you got to keep you know if you keep them to four here it changes the way that the Mariners have to play on third and fourth down it's tough to tell on any of these injuries exactly what's going on especially severity but just from the look of it kind of looks like maybe a cramp with the way Jaeger Zemer was and we saw Pulling some guys. On his leg. And we saw some guys come over in timeouts. There's clearly a few of the guys up front dealing with some cramping. That's not even particularly hot. It's a nice night for football, but you get amped up in these rivalry games, and, yeah. and a lot of guys playing both ways. <laughs> yeah, the guys going both ways, and I think that looks like it's uh, 16. Is that Avery Cody? Avery Cody, and he cramped up earlier yeah. and was down. So second time. There's been a stoppage to get him off the field. He dealt with some injuries during track season. Could be related, maybe not. 27-20, Marine City on top. 11.32 to go. We're just 28 seconds into the fourth quarter. Mariners with the ball. Osterlin rolling to his right, looking to complete this pass. Has a man. It's caught and complete. Caught there by Cooper Letson. Brought out of bounds there by Ryan Pettinger. Pettinger kind of tosses him out by the back of the jersey there. Pretty good play, though. Pennywell was giving chase to Lincoln Osterlin, and Osterlin was able to flip it out into the flat, and that gives Marine City probably two cracks at getting two yards here. So the Mariners been. moving the football a little bit here. Third down and two. Big play here. Handoff. Jacobs makes his way across the 40. That's a Mariner first down. Whoa. Mariners starting to get after it. Big 79 there. Noah Northrup getting after it after the whistle, kind of making sure the Saints realize it looked like he was given the Zeke. Let us eat. <laughs> Let us eat. I, I saw something of that. Like he was eating a bowl of soup, bowl of cereal, something. I don't know. What. <laughs> Either way, the Mariners moving the football a little bit here. Right now, the Mariners are eating. So. eating. <laughs> Ball on the 35-yard line. Second down, about six yards to go. Mariners just kind of keeping it real basic, basic formations, basic personnel, and going right at the teeth of the Saints. Osterlin hands to the first man through. I believe that's going to be Evan Jones. It is, and I think that's another Marine City first down. For the Saints, somebody's got to step up, make a play, maybe knock a football loose here. That would be just what the doctor ordered. You're down that score, but it's starting to feel like the momentum has all moved over to the Marine City sideline, and you can thank their offensive front for that because they've taken control when they really, up to the 
midway point of the third. Hadn't done a whole lot. Osterlund hands this one to Maluski, left side. Picks up maybe a few yards on the play. This is a seven-point game, 27-20. Avery Cody back in the game after hydrating, trying to take care of those cramps. Comes in for number 32, Josh Phillips. Second down and six. Osterlin under center, going to turn to his left, rolling. He's under a little bit of pressure here. Tries to keep the football. He does. Brought down there by a couple Saints. Maybe picked up a yard, maybe two. It's going to be third down and four or five here for Marine City. Elijah Naylor, another good job there. He kind of overran or got outrun by Lincoln Osterlin, but did not give up on the play. And when Osterlin had to stutter step around a would-be tackler, Naylor caught him from behind. I think of the Marine City timeout here by Coach Darren Letson. Took one on a third down earlier, I believe. So third down and five from the St. Clair 23. Marine City is up seven, so we're going to come out of this timeout. It's going to be a big one. Big third down. May want to talk about getting two plays called as that kind of hurry up. You might say, all right, we're running. Whatever play it is they're picking, I would say it's probably going to be something off the left tackle again. And they might run it twice, thinking that they can get five yards in both. Got to thank our CTV buddy, Craig Zimmerman, on the Mariner side. Earlier, he, he hooked me up with their uh, depth chart. Nice. He, he had Very a beautiful nice. chart. Well, how, well, we needed to use it because there have been some, some injuries as well. And so our, my buddy... Number 79, Noah Northrup, who yeah. was eating a bowl of cereal there when the Mariners were moving to football. He's their left tackle. Yeah, got so it. So I think they've been running behind him the whole yeah, time. Yeah, he's juiced up. It makes a lot of sense to me. And he's done a nice job. Having a night. He is leaning on the right side of the Saints defensive front, which has some formidable guys on it themselves, but guys who also play both sides of the football, including Carter Peterson. And there oh, they so go in the middle there. Right up the middle. I think that's going to be Jacobs or Jones once again. Mariner first down for sure. They get the sticks moving. Saints going to have to tighten up here. Mariner is going to be happy to burn as much clock as they possibly can, and then I'm sure trying to bleed clock and score, make it a two-score game. That's the recipe for success as the fourth quarter gets into the later stages. They went it, Michigan. Yeah. Uh, Line. Yeah, the uh, train formation. Handoff once again to Owen Jacobs. He's going to take this thing down. I think it's going to be a first and goal now for Marine City. Big time drive by the Mariners right now. It is. It's first down and goal from the five-yard line. Osterlin under center. Takes the snap. Turns to his left. Hands it once again. Jacobs, he's thundering his way down. I think he's going to be stopped short. Still picked up maybe two yards in the play. Letson wants him to go. You can see it from here. Same idea. They've done that. They did this to close out the first half. Oh, so then once again takes the snap, turns to his left hands to Jacobs. Left side, he's up in the air into the end zone. Flames go up. Cannon goes off. Marine City touchdown. Make it 33 to 20. Mariners on top. And I'm pretty sure he ran right behind Noah Northrup. And two good drives right in a row after the Saints took all the momentum. They're going to have to go find some and pretty quickly. 8.07 is what is on the clock here. Extra point coming up for Marine City. And I'll tell you what, that's going to be a penalty. The Mariners no were doubt, not set. There but was it a, didn't go, so the Saints should decline it. Yeah. Mariners did not have all their players out on the field before they snapped that football. Saints will indeed decline the penalty, so no damage there on the point after touchdown. It stays 33 to 20 with 8.07 on the clock here in the fourth. Interesting. It's interesting to me that that's not a a dead ball foul. You know, if you have a guy that goes, but I guess it would just well, be. Well, because then it would be advantage. Well, correct. It would be to your advantage. Correct. To which do it. Are, yeah, which would be, you know, in this particular case, that would be. A bad thing for yeah. the Saints, but a, a miss that goes off the post. I guess it's just the same as illegal it works motion. Out pretty right. good. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but illegal motion, you know, yeah. I guess is what it comes right. down to. He's going forward at the snap. Right. 
Again, we see yeah, that in this case, personnel. I, think, I think he came out of the bleachers. Yeah, he was flying. <laughs> I'm, you know, I, I'm sure that's just the the nature of having different guys have to fill in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, haven't done it as much, and you're amped up, and you're playing a rivalry game, and your boy just scored, and you yeah. go, "Oh, I'm the right. second <laughs> right guy," and they fly out there in a panic. Right. Fortunately for that young man, probably nothing really hurt there so much because the kick was missed, regardless. There you see another Mariner another flying off the field. 11 guys on the field now for Marine City. They kick this thing deep. Luther back there has to bobble it a little bit. Picks it up, though. Cuts back towards the middle of the field and brought down pretty quickly. Looked like that was number 66, Will Steyer, with a nice tackle. Eight oh two is all we got left on the clock here. Saints offense looking to strike quickly here. Saints offense came out of the gates on fire to start the second half. Then the Mariner offense returned the favor, got their offense rolling. They're up 13 points here with 8.02 on the clock here on CTV. Saints with a late sub there. Max Hunger getting himself on the field. Maybe. So Farkas and the Saints looking to respond here. And I think Coach Bishop's going to take a timeout. It is, the Saints never looked like they quite – had the right personnel, maybe the wrong message. Tough to say, but this is important here. This is big. Yeah, they're trying to run some guys on. Hunger looked like he was totally convinced he was supposed to go in yeah. right about until he got to the until huddle. He, and then he didn't know for sure. Yeah. I don't know what his teammates told him, but there was clearly confusion. And to be honest, you know, there have been, I thought, some times where timeouts have been used. I don't mind this one. I think you've got to have a good, solid drive here, and you can't start off with a penalty. You can't start off behind the sticks with eight minutes left and what Marine City's offense has done. I think you have to score on this drive, and you want to start on the right foot, and that timeout's not going to mean a whole lot right. to you if you're down three scores. Sure. If I had to guess, and I've been there before, this is just a, literally a guess. The way that Hunger looked after he went in there, they have told him to go get somebody maybe, and he's like, I don't see that person. <laughs> that could have been it. <laughs> who, who am I getting out of the game? Yeah. <laughs> Farkas in the gun. Look to his left to throw this one out there. It looks like he's got Shulk out there. A little bit underthrown. Shulk came back for the football, but it lands incomplete. That's a tough one there. I think I think Farkas gave Shulk an opportunity for one-on-one. On one. He yeah. didn't come back for it. Right. If he came all the way back for it, I think he runs into the defender. You might get a P.I. Yeah. Nonetheless, sometimes that ball gets caught up there, and from here it's easy to see. But from down there, if it catches the lights just right, yeah. hard for tough Shulk to, to make that adjustment. I think you're going to see more of that, though. I think you're going to have to let Nesbitt and Schalk yep. come and make plays on smaller. And in Nesbitt's case, he's got a younger defensive back on him once in a while. Just got to try to let your guy cook. Schalk going to come out of the ball game. Pettinger went in there for him. Farkas and company looking to respond. 7.56 on the clock here in the fourth. Marcus in the gun once again. He's got Luther to his left. He's got a man in motion as Pettinger. Looks like he's going to hand it to Luther. Luther right side. Maybe picks up a couple yards, so brings up a third down. Third and seven or eight coming up here for St. Clair. Clock is ticking. Clock is the friend of Marine City, and the Saints need to hope that that thing slows down a little bit as they move the football. Farkas takes his orders from the sideline. Shulk also going to be subbed back into the game. Pettinger rushing off the field. Clock heading out towards seven minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Two receivers bottom of your screen to the left of Farkas. One receiver to the top should be Nesbitt. He's got one defensive back on him. Farkas is <laughs> pressured. Farkas scrambling to his right, loses the football. It's on the deck. Officials yet to signal. There is an official right on top of this pile, two of them. And I think St. Clair may have ended up back on that football based Somehow on the reactions. Somehow they ended up back on top of that. That kicked right off the knee yeah. of a Mariner trying to recover. And this is a spot where, I don't know, you may have to bring the punt team on here because – if you do not get this, the game is yeah. effectively over. You can punt the football 
and still be in the game. Um, Looks like that's going to be the case. Yeah, they put themselves in a spot. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to go some type of motion and hard count here to see if you can get a jump. So fourth and eight, Saints bring the punt to Imam, and it's Ellis. He did run one earlier for a first down, but he does get this one away. Nobody back from Marine City. Ball going to bounce and make its way into Marine City territory. They're going to start this drive on about their own 46-yard line. 6.08 is what's on the clock. Marine City 33, St. Clair 20. You may have heard some clapping in the background. We are on the technically the St. Clair home side. as the Marine City coaching staff feeling pretty good. Where they're, they're at. They have reason to. Their yep. defense stepped up and got the stop when it needed to. And right now, lots of confidence in that offensive front. I mean, the Saints need to expect to see more of the same. At some point, you might have to sell out into those gaps and hope Coach lets in and doesn't try to sling one over the top on you. Saints defense did stand their ground multiple times, forced a couple first-half turnovers, looking to do the same here in the second half. Marine City hands it off and only picks up a yard or two on the play, but the clock keeps ticking. That's got to be objective number one if you're a Marine City Mariner. Saints did sell out that time defensively, put almost everybody up in the box. It's just going to be a matter of choice. Now, I will say it looked like they had, I think it was Maluski in the backfield, and he did a great individual job to just kind of tiptoe his way to four, a good four yards, um, which, you know, if you're going to load the box like that and you're the Saints, you can't give up four. I'm sure that's what they're thinking. They want him behind the sticks. So the clock keeps rolling. We're under five and a half minutes to go here. Handoff up the middle, breaks a tackle, gets to the midfield. Brought down by a couple Saints. I believe that was Evan Jones once again on the carry for Marine City. Saints drove him back two or three yards at the initial spot, and he just kind of bounced off of everybody and found another play. It was very similar to the last run. Saints did a good job of pushing the pile, but nobody's putting hands on the running back, get him to the ground. Under five to go now. Third down and five. Big couple plays here for the Saints defense. Marine City looking to advance this football and keep the clock moving. Man in motion. Osterlin going to take the snap. Wow. Rolling to his right. Might keep this one. Does. Gets himself to the 45, 44, almost all the way down to the 40. That's a Mariner first down. It may not officially end it, but that was an an enormous first down, yeah. 434 to play. Play clock pretty long in high school football and only one time out for the Saints left. So you got to imagine they're going to have to burn it here pretty quick. Mariners are 100% not going to pass the ball for the remainder of this football game. That's the rare case where I would say going out of bounds, I didn't hate it. <laughs> like right. normally you'd be like why why would you not stay in bounds that's that's one where he was so close to the to the line of gain just just get the first he down. advanced he, it was worth it and now they can chunk this away now if you're St. Clair you're toying with the idea of letting the Mariners score might be the quickest way to get the ball back but at the same time people are catching on to that and you might see somebody just run up there and take a knee anyhow at about the five yard line just about four minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Marine City 33, St. Clair 20. Oh, still in under center. Going to turn and keep the football, actually. He turned to his left, faked it, kept it. Going to get himself down to about the St. Clair 34, 33-yard line. Going to be third down and two for Marine City. Got a Mariner down on the play here, it looks like. So like if you're St. Clair, I, I did see, I saw uh, before this series started or coming out of a break there, um, Coach Gleason, Brady Gleason over there, kind of giving the defense a signal to rip that ball out there, out of the out of those guys' hands. Got to do what you can. Get your hand in there and a rip at it. First part of this football game really marred by turnovers and uh, sloppy play. I haven't seen any of that really in the second half. It's been a pretty clean football mm -hmm. game in the second half. Credit really, I mean, both football teams put up really shining moments in this football, you know, in this game. And right now, obviously, the momentum shifted back and squarely on the side of the Mariners. But the Saints did a good job showing some metal coming out of the, the locker room, gave themselves an opportunity in this football game. 
a lesson to be learned here about what the offensive line can do to adjust and take hold of a football game because that really made the difference here in the second half for the Mariners. They were able to just go right at the front of St. Clair, and it made all the difference. Handoff here. That football might have come out. I think out. it might have come out. All these close calls on these, not a lot of excitement, as we mentioned before. <laughs> the officials are very calm yeah. about the way that they're approaching loose footballs. Normally you see a swarming right. of the officials, and they've, they've kind of just made their way up yeah. there quietly. <laughs> but they've done a nice job. Yeah, it's been fine. They just haven't done anything to uh, excite us from, fourth from and this one. far away. It's a fourth down here for Marine City. Snap, keeps it rolling to his right, under pressure, avoids it, cuts back. At the 30, that's going to be a Mariner first down. <laughs> Big time play there by the sophomore quarterback, Lincoln Osterland. First down, Marine City. He's rolling out. He has really no intention of throwing the football there. That's all about giving him space to operate and run, and that's exactly what he did for another first down. Second time in the last couple drives, he's done that. This time he doesn't go out of bounds. Saints with the one timeout. That's about it, Mr. Brenner. Yeah. Under three minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Another handoff left side. This time Kerry going to be there by Sufian. Pretty good pop there. Hard to tell who put it on him, but Sufian went flying there. Nice example of guys just playing to the finish, though. Nothing stopping anybody from making big hits here in the waning moments. The Saints going to take a timeout here with 2.24 on the clock. They're down 13 points. I mean, the entire conversation right now, Tom, is kind of two things either we're going to play this tough we're going to stack it up we're going to try to rip the ball free because marine city's not in a position to take a knee yet uh we're number two we're going to put up no resistance here you're going to pretend like you're going after them you're going to let them score and you're going to take your chances with onside kicks and explosive plays yeah those are about your only two options uh, and then if you're the mariners you're probably talking about if they let you go once you get past the once you get to the 10 yard line, you lay down. Yeah. We're taking a knee. Right. So, you know, it's a gamble. Are right. the kids going to listen? And are they going to execute? Those are the, the options that you have. So, Oster Osterland and the Mariners back out there, takes the snap, turns to his left, hands it off. Once again, Sufian with it up the sideline. I think he may have ended up out of bounds. Interesting Six. because I think the Saints might have opted for what I had just mentioned. Yeah. They give him the first down there, which makes it doubly brutal yeah. because if they were letting him score, right. he could have gone in, but he stepped out, and I think right. now the Mariners are in a spot where they can kneel this one away. Yep. 2.18 on the clock here. Marine City 33, St. Clair 20. And I say I, I don't know that you can officially kneel it away. But if you walk around a little bit sure. and burn off a couple of extra seconds, you can essentially kneel it away. It's almost it's almost dead on, I think, for the, right. that they yeah. can do it. Yeah, the, the amount of time there, I think you're looking at pretty close. Plus, we don't have the visible play clock, and I right. can appreciate the, uh, the precision that people are expected to do things with. But that back judge may or may not get the clock started exactly at the right time. Sure. And... Uh, my guess is the Mariners are probably all set to milk this one away. Orange City gets set here. Osterlin takes the snap, going to turn to his right. Hand off once again. Getting down to about the 8-9 yard line. And yeah, we mentioned it before we got this broadcast, during the broadcast. Since 1950, the series is 46-21-4 and four in favor of Marine City. They appear to be on their way to tacking on to that record, making it 47 wins over the St. Clair Saints since 1950. Certainly an impressive program. Looking to bounce back, always in the mix to win the, the MAC Silver, whatever MAC they're in, but obviously this year it's the Silver. and They're going to be on their way to doing that now. I think a formidable opponent in Lampfear. 
uh, kind of looming out there. Marine City just always kind of figures out a way. Here you saw them do it in the second half. St. Clair, I believe, is going to travel to Clintondale next week, if I'm not mistaken. So it's fourth down. Marine City hands this one off. Kind of just a matter of whether they're going to keep the football and officially kneel this one out or whether the Saints have to bring their offense on the field here. Marine City is going to head to South Lake. I think South Lake, if I heard correctly, is losing to Marysville. They were losing 35 nothing at the half. So you got to imagine Marine City is going to take care of that business next week as well. But a really physical football game today. Uh, you know, I think mo moments of things that the Saints can build on wasn't quite enough overall. Uh, but there's going to be some good tape for the kids and some guys who learn that they can be really impactful. Um, offensive front for Marine City made a difference in the second half. Shout out goes to them. They played with some grit and toughness. And obviously they're going to be trying to chase a league title. So the Saints offense does get to come back out on the field one last time here with 32 seconds left on the clock. It's 33-20 Marine City. Man in motion is Ellis. Farkas keeps it. Looks to pass out to his right. It was batted up in the air. That might be a pick six. It is. So a little insult to injury here. Uh, oh here my. on the guy, kind of milking this one away, feeling bad that the Saints are going to get the ball back and potentially, uh, you know, score, and I'm the guy giving up, and then they turn and a pick <laughs> six. So uh, couldn't just go quietly into the night and close this thing out at East China Stadium. The Mariners kind of finished it in Mariner fashion, and the cannon goes off, and the flames fly, and we got to watch him kick an extra point again. Or not. Oh, and we got more chaos here. So we get to see some more special teams. So it's 39 to 20, Marine City on top now. I wish I would have saw who made that play because it, it was an outstanding Kyler, play. I, I think it was Kyler Rumley. Okay. I think it was 44. Okay. It's hard to tell. If I mess that up and you're at home mad at me, remember we don't have any monitors, so we're – we're in the twilight in a bright press box with bright lights in our face. We're doing our best. But I think it was Rumley, 44, that it hit off his chest and he caught it himself. A pretty impressive play nonetheless. And that's something, you know, to take away from this football game. If, you know, sophomore quarterback Ben Farkas, he's, he's obviously, you know, got some talent, throws a good football, but he has had a lot of balls deflected tonight um, and batted down. That one obviously with an exclamation point on it. Uh, but something that he's going to have to work on, getting it out quicker, finding those passing lanes, not letting those get disrupted quite as often. So 27 seconds on the clock now. This last minute taking significantly longer <laughs> than anticipated. No doubt. This, the last four minutes of this quarter took as long as the entire uh, third. A little pooch here by Marine City. Fielded by the Saints at about their own 20. Ellis has it. And Got to be a little careful here. Guys are blasting off on each other still. Yeah, this is the time when most bad things happen. I, yep. It's tough because, you know, as the coach that's down by 19 points and it, the game is effectively over, do you send your guy out there to take a knee? What's the best look? I'll tell you that I probably would and just try to move on to next week without one of my starters taking an injury here on the last play. Uh, sometimes... Pride's a funny thing, and yep. you might try to run sure. a play here. So Farkas and the Saints back out there with 23 seconds to go in this ball game here at East China Stadium. He's in the shotgun once again, takes the snap. He's going to hand it off. Looks like it's Luther, gets himself across the 35 to about the 36, 37-yard line. Picks up eight or nine yards on the play. So this ball game, to, to give the Saints credit, they answered coming out of the half. Got this thing to 20-20. And then got to give Marine City credit because after that, they went on a 19-0 run. 39-20 is your final. Marine City once again wins the battle for the bell. They keep it here at East China Stadium. 
Mariners going to ring the bell, and the offensive line should be the first group to go over and, and do it. They overcame some significant injuries to some important guys. Some other guys stepped up. They get all the credit. Saints even put their backs against the wall and took the momentum from them. Credit to the Saints for doing that. It would have been easy to pack up and be done uh, coming out of a tough first half finish. They came out and established a tied football game, but the Mariners were just too much in the end. And congratulations goes out to Coach Letson and the other uh, 64 people on their coaching staff uh, <laughs> for, for this one. Saints going to move to 1-2 and two on the year overall. Marine City going to move to 2-1. and one. Marine City winning back-to-back -back games. Saints opened up with a loss, responded with a win, and then dropped tonight's contest here at East China Stadium. For Brad Robbins, I'm Tom Brenner. For all of our crew, we thank you for your hard work down there in the truck. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching high school football here on CTV. You've been watching East China High School Sports presented by Magda. Join us again soon for more East China High School sports action on CTV, your community TV channel for Marine City and St. Clair.